Rev as the lights illuminate here. One of the newest tracks on the iRacing service. A fictional layout, but Brands Hatch has rally cross heritage. Great jump from Connor Martell is four wide. They fly their way down in towards turn number one. It's Baccarat who makes contact with Atkinson. That causes a bit of a traffic jam. Uh, no, it was Bilko Williams who in fact got turned around there, Johnny. Atkinson sc uh, screams into the race lead, and I think it's Baccarat, in fact, in second. Good start from Baccarat for sure. So Atkinson in first, as you confirm, and Baccarat potentially to the first position here. Atkinson has absolutely missed the apex by a country mile. Big mistake by Chris Atkinson, the Australian, hands the lead to Norwegian of Andreas Bakaru. Now, at the start, you saw Tim Stevens go nowhere off the line. I think that was just poor reaction time from Tim Stevens. He's in sixth. I think the motto of what we learned here at the starts is head to the inside line. That's your best bet. And that is a very interesting strategy. We've seen a joker from Atkinson and Tim Stevens at the back of shot. That's going to hand them into a whole lot of traffic here in the early laps. I don't like that strategy at all. Oh, and he's, I think, was hoping to maybe come out in front of Martel, but in fact cycles out into fourth position with Tanner Whitten in the Ford right behind him as they break down into the heavy braking zone of turn one. Baccarat, Krogstad, Martel, Atkinson, and Whitten. That's the top five, Johnny. And now you have at the front of your field a couple of cars that, like you said, have really launched, worked their way up on these launches, and it sets up, I think, an interesting thing for these sim races as Widen barges Atkinson out of the way, hurts the car that's taken Jokers, but we do need to watch out on these launches now because clearly uh, there are people that are finding lots of grip further back in the pack. Yeah, certainly. So we've got three different dark horses in your top three positions. Andres Bakarut, who almost won the All-Star Invitational last year at Sonoma, only raced in the final few rounds, but he certainly got the speed to win does the Norwegian. You've got Henrik Krogstad who raced with the sim racers. That's how quick he is. He is certainly one of the best in the world in that respect. Races for Hanson Williams Esports. And then you've got Connor Martel who raced for Dreyer and Reinbold Racing. And the hammer as he's known hammers it into the apex of turn number one. And he has won races of the All-Star Invitational. So you've got three different drivers here who are all in realistic contention of taking feature race victory. And at least in the case of Krogstad and Martel, relatively young. Uh, Martel, 23 years of age, as is Krogstad backwards, slightly older, but still very young in his racing career. Gap between first and second, as you see backwards slip and slide his way uh, down the hill, back onto the main uh, circuit itself. 2.1 seconds, Johnny, and all of this fighting between Krogstad and Martel, it's not le necessarily letting Backward run away with this race, and that lets, I think, Chris Atkinson who is struggling on the Joker now, the first car to have taken it. He's being pressured by Tim Stevens, and there's no real hope, I think, for Atkinson to really challenge a backward right now. No, certainly not. I didn't like that first lap Joker strategy at all. As we see a whole lot of drivers here in a whole lot of positions, we've got to... Now, you can see on the left-hand side of the screen, anyone with the highlighted little Joker crown has taken that joker lap. It is required. Whether or not you want to take it, you need to take it once and once only during the race. As we see a nice little scrap here between Stevens and uh, is that Chris Atkinson? Yes, it is. Chris Atkinson right up ahead of him in the car expert Subaru. And right behind them is Scott Speed. Very unlikely or very unlike Scott Speed to be down in seventh. He is always in or up amongst those drivers in the first position winning these All-Star Invitational, but he was involved in a whole heap of collisions there on the first lap. Makes his way around Chris Atkinson, who has been disposed by both of them. Two positions Ooh. lost, and Atkinson turns around Scott Speed. He won't be happy with that at all. Ah, but watch the pace from Tim Stevens right now. Very, very impressed at how he pulled away from uh, Chris Atkinson, as I think Tanner Whitten has come down onto the Joker this last time around as well. So now... He is the leading car to have taken the slightly longer lap as I think Chris Atkinson into the wall at turn one as well. Here, though, is the Henrik Krodstad Connor Martel battle. Still closing now on Andreas Backerud. Gap down to 1.6 seconds as Martel gets it wrong over the jump. Can he hold on to that car, slipping and sliding his way Where through the left-hand corner? And just about holds on, Johnny. Yeah, I was waiting for him to appear in shot. That's what we needed there. It was like old-fashioned Formula 1 back in the 1960s. Just take the stopwatch, and if the guy doesn't appear the next time by, you know he's had an accident somewhere in the circuit. And um, unfortunately, one of these corners, the final corner, Clark Curve, that's how they actually found out that Jim Clark passed away over at Hockenheim in Formula 2. Very sad story. 
for Jim Clark. He's one of the best drivers of all time in motor racing. Here's a replay of what happened to Martel. You saw butchered the jump on the entry. It's very difficult. Looks easy. Looks straight, doesn't it? But it's not as easy as you might think. Henry Krogstad right now on a hunt towards a race victory. They got 1.7 seconds. Both Ooh. these drivers right now need to take the joker lap. Tim Both Stevens to victory. Yeah, Tim Stevens down the order into eighth. He's had it off at turn one. Scott Speed has had his own issue. Retired in this race, he will finish in tenth position. Not where you expect a driver like Scott Speed to necessarily end up. Uh, like Johnny says, though, focusing on the battle out front, as we will get a replay of what happened to Stevens down into the he heavy braking zone at turn one, and you can see just gets it slightly wrong. You see the puff of smoke in front of him. Turns in too early, and just like we saw for James Hinchcliffe slightly earlier on, Stevens has to do a bit of a 360. Back to live coverage, though. Krogstad, 2.7 seconds, 3 seconds, because he's come down the Joker this time around, Johnny. Yeah, I don't think you need the handbrake through Turn 1. You can see Krogstad there driving it perfectly without the handbrake. So by yoinking that handbrake, as fun as it is, it's unnecessary. So Krogstad's taken the Joker that time by. So it's lit up on the left-hand side of the screen. So he has officially taken the Joker, and that means Bakarud needs to monitor the gaps. 3.1 seconds the gap between the two Norwegians. We will most likely see a driver from Norway win this race. But if the gap's 1.9 to 2.1 seconds, it will be a drag race to the finish line. This is what this circuit invites. This is how it was designed. I'm looking forward to this finish. And it's Bakarud who will be in the prime position to block off the momentum for Krogstad if it's close enough. But, of course, a superior speed on the side of the 77. It will be three laps to go this time around. It's Andreas Bakarud leads from Henrik Krogstad. Conor Martel in third. Tanner Witt in fourth as we're watching Chris Atkinson off into the gra uh, grass very briefly. Mikey Lawrence, who took victory in the second of our consolation races, up into sixth. Still yet, I think, for the car in front to come down onto pit road. Uh, pit road, come down onto the Joker, Johnny. Excuse me there. That's fine. Chris Atkinson, it's April here. He's missed summer by about four months because he keeps trying to make a few trips to the beach there, doesn't he? In the gravel at the outside of Clark Curve. Probably still needs a tan, doesn't he? As we ride on board with, <laughs> with Chris. He's uh, initially was a co-driver for his brother Ben as we see one driver stricken off ahead of them now is that Mike McKinney I believe it might be Mike McKinney who's made a mistake heading through Graham Hill Ben I was about to say about Atkinson I was trying to fit in a, a nice little nifty fact there it was a co-driver for his brother Ben they switched roles and he never looked back for his racing career but for the moment Mike McKinney has made that error on the approach to Graham Hill Ben luckily keeps his positions now the gap for the lead here Backroot has taken the Joker. It's now half a second between the two with a two couple laps. laps remaining. It's two laps as we'll take a quick look at the replay for McKinney over the jump. Once more, just lands slightly wrong. A uh, rejoin maybe not the safest as well, but no harm, no foul. Like Johnny says, seven tenths is the gap, but I do think, Johnny, Backroot is in control because Krogstad, while he's been quick, has not really been close enough to try anything in the first nine laps of this race. And that's IQ for you, a driver of Han Andres Bakarud, who races in the FIA World Rallycross Championship. Henry Krogstad looking to make the full-time move from RX2 to that top division. Bakarud wondering, hey, I don't want to drag race to the finish here and make it exciting. I want to win this race. I'm going to take the Joker early and block that track position. Krogstad has missed his breaking point into turn one on the final lap, and I think he's given up the victory to Andreas Bakarud, or at least the opportunity for a victory. Looks like Bakarud, the Norwegian, will finally take the top step of the podium in one of these All-Star Invitationals. He's had some fun in these All-Star Invitationals before, but like you say, no victory just yet as we pick up Connor Martel and Tanner Widen. Uh, Widen has gone and passed in the Ford up into the podium positions, but you know, watching Bakarud and Krogstad as well as they come up into the final couple of corners. It's been an interesting 10 laps contact between Martel and Widen. They will continue to duel it out for the final step of the podium. Almost dumping Widen is Martel. But out of the final corner, it is Andreas Backer, a driver for RX Cartel in the real world. In the sim, though, in that Subaru, Monster Energy Colors, victory in the 13. And Johnny, like you said, I think finally gets the reward that, that he kind of wants from these events because he's been a regular competitor in these invitational events.
of weeks ago, the iRacing IRX All-Star Invitational returned for 2021 as the world's best in both full metal and virtual motorsport ventured onto the iRacing service to sling the dirt around the virtual brand's hatch. It was Andreas Backert and Johan Haar taking victory in England, but real racers and sim racers split up for round two as we begin here at the World Center of Racing to watch some of the biggest name in motorsports duke it out on the virtual dirt. Hello and welcome back to RaceBot TV and iRacing Live for coverage in round two of the IRX All-Star Invitational presented by Yokohama. My name is Arjuna Kankipati and alongside for today's action is Jonathan Simon with Tyler Maxson in the production booth controlling all the action. Excited to be back for round two, Johnny, and to see two different tracks in action. We start here in the Sunshine State, but once the pros are done, we'll make our way across the pond to watch the sim racers get their first competitive crack at the Circuit de Barcelona, Catalunya. And it's easy as a click of a button as we switch between the two circuits, two different continents as well, from North America all the way to Europe, to one of the brand new circuits on the iRacing calendar in Barcelona, brought to the service in the past six months. Looking forward to going there, but first off, we've got our motorsport drivers, our pro sim racers coming up at Daytona. It is a beautiful layout, one we previously used back in Red Bull GRC from 2014 to 2016. It's 1.3 kilometers, 0.8 miles, depending on your units of choice. 69% asphalt, 31% dirt split, and the Joker Delta time around about two seconds, but it's a shortcut compared to Barcelona, which is the long way round. And so here's a look at the event format. Qualifying underway, five minutes. The cars get the track to themselves to set uh, their fastest lap across three lap times. We'll have three heat races with 13 uh, motorsports professionals entered in today's race. Five laps in length, the top two of them transfer. And then we'll head into our sole LCQ in today's professional section of this competition, Johnny. And in that one, four different drivers will advance. We saw a couple of weeks ago at Brands Hatch things getting increasingly physical over the course of the night. And I'm expecting the same thing here today. Yeah, a lot of door banging, elbows out, hustling and bustling. It's what you want to see in Rallycross. It really is a phys physical sport. It's like ice hockey on wheels as we are currently in qualifying. So the qualifying... Order sets out the grid and your starting position for our heats. We watch Connor Daly, who's had some fun and looks like he's having a lot of fun there over the jump and absolutely butchering the landing. But he's been in these events for quite some time and he seems to have some good fun with it. What we'll also have during the races and the events today are virtual track resets. So what you normally see in Rallycross is cool grooves and you see the dirt sort of lift up off the ground and there's sort of like one line that opens up much like you do in racing the track rubbers in we're going to have that here today and we're going to have the track cleaned up at certain times too and the best part is there's no plan of action there race control will do that at will so drivers have to be on their tiptoes something the sim professionals have to think about heading into the world championship season as well connor daly he had a bit of an issue over the jump he's fortunate i'm sure not to be on his roof as he was uh, just this past weekend the NTT IndyCar Series heading to the Texas Motor Speedway. Qualifying almost done with 60 seconds left on the clock. It's Henrik Krogstad with a 42.39 that set the fastest lap time. Andreas Backerud, winner last time out, Johnny, in second with Kevin Hansen in third. And Henrik Krogstad, very, very quick. We know he was in a qualified, well, received a wild card entry for the Sim Racers World Championship. And those are those professional Sim Racers that are coming up in the second half of today's coverage. Good on Krogstad for pole position for the moment. He snatches his first one of the season. Kevin Hansen was our pole sitter last week, but um, unfortunately we'll start from third. But we say third, actually, excuse me, he qualifies third, but there are three heats. So he will start from pole from heat three. Bakarud, though, our overall winner, as you mentioned, looking to make it two from two. He never won one of these last year in the All-Star Invitational. Good to see him get that out of the way early. It was a fun race last time. Like Johnny said, lots of door banging. Qualifying comes to a close then. Let's go trackside for the first time today and take a look at our starting bid in round two of the IRX All-Star Invitational. And so with an inverted grid, Mario Bonfante Jr. will start on pole with Tim Stevens, uh, motorsports, uh, sorry, Cena editor on his outside. It's actually a three wide front row. So Brandon Seminick will line up all the way on the outside with Connor Martel and Henrik Krogstad having some work to do lining up at the tail end of this five car field. 
Yeah, when we have a 10-car field for Daytona in the feature, it's going to be a 3x3x2x2 three by three by two by two grid. And pole position has the inside. It is inverted for every single session today. And that's why you see Mario Bonfani Jr., the slowest qualifier, start from pole. So he's got a second shot here at potentially making it through to the feature. Your top two advance. Bonfante drives with uh, hand assist as well, so and a motion rig, is, if I recall from his YouTube, so he'll have an interesting ride di diving down into the final turn before you start your first flying lap. We're about to get underway here then as the engines begin to rev and the lights illuminate. Five cars, two spots on the line. Here at Daytona, we're underway. Great start from Stevens. Even better start on the outside there from Seminuk, who will lead us through turn number I guess it's 12. Contact between Stevens and Seminuk. Stevens will scamper into the race lead. Here comes Krogstad, trying to take advantage. He's going to have contact from behind. Oh, that was a big one, Johnny. Not sure who that was that spun off in the background. That was Mario Bonfanti Jr. So from pole position, he's around just before the jump. But it's Stevens from Seminuk from Henry Krogstad, who's made progress through the field. Now, remember, as we said, the top two advance. Krogstad is hammering that brake pedal with the left foot as he tries to get his Subaru stopped. He's racing in the Hanson Williams eSports Subaru. That's the livery he donned during the World Championship last year. Now remember, you can only take one Joker and you have to take it in this race. Seminac goes for it. He'll get a two second shortcut through the field and snatch the lead. So he's now cycled in some, into some clean air. Krogstad tucks in behind Tim Stevens, who was fairly quick last time, if not consistent. A right on board with the 77, working through the double right-hander, using the anti-cut curve to try and rotate the car, but unable to get the power down. And now we work through this long section. This is the only part, Johnny, of, the, of this layout that is not really run in the real world at any point at all. The rest of this track, 75% of this, was used over the GRC years. Yep, exactly. Good to see it in the sim. Was the fastest circuit in Rallycross as we see Krogstad go to the Joker until Brands Hatch was introduced. Now, Brands Hatch is the fastest, which demotes Daytona to the second fastest. Here's a replay of what happened to Seminac. Oh, and Seminac's actually fallen down the timing screen, so not sure what happened there. Oh, Looks like the rear end had already come around, Johnny. Oh, okay. I thought he disappeared for a second. So he's, yeah, he's made a mistake there. And that's why we didn't catch that. So he was completely disappeared. Obviously, some technical issues for him. That means the lead has been handed to Henry Krogstad. Unfortunately, though, Arjuna, he will, if he wins this heat, start from last in the feature. I'll have to do it all over again, but looking very comfortable. Martel has come down onto the Joker, leaving Stevens to do so this time around. He won't wait to the closing stages of this race, and the 64 machine should slot back up into second as they work their way into turn one for the penultimate time. Martel will try and get the over-under. A bit of bumper cars into the jump, and side-by-side side through the double right-hander. Martel looking supremely confident, Johnny, in the car he's got underneath him. Yep, certainly. Everybody's taken the Joker, as you can see on the graphic there. So it will light up yellow if they've taken the Joker. And when it's not highlighted in, they've still yet to take it. And it updates at the end of the lap as they cross the line. Here it's straight away. We've had some great finishes over the years, especially in our Sim Racers World Championship, where we've had drivers take to the Joker on the final lap and really try and snatch that victory. And we've had a lot of great races here back in Red Bull GRC in the real world. What a shot! by Henrik Krogstad, your 2020 RX2 champion, who will have some confidence going into the features. If you win from the back of the grid in the heat, yes, you've got to start from the back in the inverted top 10, but if he's done it once, he can do it again, although he's going to have to deal with double the field. And so Krogstad will roll to victory, supremely confident down into the start. Might have almost slipped his way up into second, but it didn't take him too long to build up a four-second advantage. And the 77 for Handsome Williams Esports takes our first heat of the night. It will be second to Connor Martel, who will advance as well. Tim Stevens, Brandon Seminuk, and Mario Bonfante Jr. heading to our last chance qualifiers. Still waiting for the final couple of cars to come across the line. There's Bonfante Jr. very deep into the final corner. But he will finish up this race. Three heats, so they will go by very quickly in this first portion of the night from the World Center of Racing. And straight away, let's take a look then at our starting grid for heat number two. 
It'll be Connor Daly taking us to the green flag in the 20 car, the US Air Force Subaru, with Mikey Lawrence and Mike McKinney on the outside of row one. Andreas Backerud will look for the start of his lifetime, the only car on row two trying to get up into the race lead. Pretty, pretty simple task, isn't it? There he is in the background in that Monster Energy Subaru. He's represented a numerous amount of energy drinks over his career and looks to bring that monster car into the first position. Great to see that US Air Force Subaru donned yet again. Daly drove that all season last time out and so did Connor Parisi, who won't be racing later today in the Sim Races World Championship. It's his wife's birthday. Good on him. Priorities there, clearly. Uh, but this will be fun. Two will advance, two will go to the Lance Charles qualifiers. McKinney and Lawrence were very strong last time at Brands Hatch. See what they can do here today. We are waiting for the lights to illuminate. The engines begin to rev up for the Heat 2. Here, live from the Daytona International Speedway. Great start from Backard, as you would expect, but Daly is going to get swarmed on the run down into the final corner. Looks like Mikey Lawrence will lead us as Backard tries to sling it three wide. Now gets checked up with Daly, who's going to fall to the rear end of this field as Backerud already up into second position. And Backerud had such a run coming off the international horseshoe that he actually tagged the rear end of Daly there. It looked like there was contact between the two. Nothing out of the ordinary. Race control, I don't think we'll give a penalty for that. It was a nice love tap and just shoved Daly out of the way. So Backerud in second, right behind here, your leader. Of, of Mikey Lawrence. Mike McKinney is in third. You see Daly rounding out the field. Who's going to take to the Joker? First opportunity this time by. You can't take it on the opening run down to turn one. Good strategy by Bakarud. Do the opposite to Mikey Lawrence. But McKinney following him down. Not sure how that will play out in his favor. So it's Bakarud now who leads as we start lap number two. Did look as well as a Bakarud used a healthy dose of handbrake to get around and a tight right-hand kink through the middle sector of the lap. Now trying to use some clean air. Now, this does look like the most racy uh, competition that we've seen so far. Replay of what happened at the start there and Carter Daly getting bullied over the anti-cut curve. Yeah, I think it was too slow coming off the exit. Bakaru just had such a run and so he just shoved him out of the way. Good physical contact in Rallycross. And as much as Daly won't be pleased with that, won't be any penalties coming Bakarud's way. So, very surprised Mikey Lawrence did not take to the Joker this time by. He's got the 1.7 second gap between himself and Bakarud. Remember, the Joker is a two second shortcut, calculated that is, from the entrance to exit. So, if Lawrence goes one more lap, look, he's already lost the Delta to Bakarud. It's two seconds now. Does he go this time? And you see the Ford playing a bit of a block at this point for Bakarud out front, who, uh, just like Krogstad, if he wins in this heat, will get cycled to the tail end of the field and lots more work to do. What does Lawrence do this time around then? Into the final corner. Doesn't look like he's setting up to come to the Joker. He's staying out there and I think waiting until the final lap of this race, Johnny. But the gap now up to 2.7 seconds. He's got to be very careful. So right now he's not going to be alongside uh, Bakarud, but now it's a one and a half second gap. Oh, and he's lost it in the background. That all but dashes his hopes of a... Now, where is he? Oh, Connor Daly's right behind him now too. So that dashes his hopes of a transfer position unless anything goes wrong for Mike McKinney. And to throw salt on the wound, a lock up for a good whole 50 meters going into the right-hand hairpin. Fastest point of the circuit coming up. If he's going to go for it now, it may be too late. There's the replay of the spin coming off the exit of Ooh. the jump, and he's thrown it and whacked it into the wall, just like we saw John Robertson do in our Sim Races World Championship last year. And if anything, that gained John Robertson some time. Well, it's at least helped Lawrence hold on to third. Not going to matter too much because it will be Andreas Backerud and Mike McKinney that advance if things hold. Backerud through that right-hand corner, down onto the back straightaway to complete the final lap in heat number two. Victor last time out, and he's starting off his night in very impressive fashion. I will say, though, for the first time, we saw McKinney Lawrence uh, making it a challenge over the first couple of laps. Does look as though the pace is much closer than it was at Brands Hatch. Backer takes victory. McKinney advances with him with Mikey Lawrence and Connor Daly going to the last chance qualifiers. Andreas Backward 
backwards over the jump to celebrate. Heat number three already getting underway, and it's only a four-car affair once more. Let's take a look at the starting grid here. It will be Jim DeChamp, the triple one, taking us to the green with Landon Huffman and Tanner Whidden uh, rounding out the front row. Whidden has some real-world experience here. He knows what it looks like staring down into the final corner. Kevin Hansen, just like Backward did in that last heat, will try and work his way from the tail end back to the front. Let's see if he can have a bit more luck than he had last time out, Johnny. And Jim Deschamps in the Nitro Circus star car. There you can see starting from first on the inside. And then later on, we talk about Landon Huffman starting in the middle. He's got some work cut out for him. His first event wasn't present for round one. The 25-year-old from North Carolina. He's ready to go here, though. Top two advance as usual. It's the same format for all our heats. Tanner Witten, though, you mentioned him very quick last week in with a good opportunity here today. Finished second in GRC Lights back in 2015 when they came to Daytona. What can he do here today on the outside of the front row? Engines rev once more as we get set for heat number three. Car squat down, rather long hold. And away we go. Wants to launch from Kevin Hansen there. Swamps Jim Zeschamp. Whitten is getting bullied though into the fi uh, final corner. It's gonna be no major drama as Landon Huffman leads. Whitten does get further bullied, it's just like we saw with Backward, Johnny. Oh, and over the anti-car curve, Tanner Whitten almost launches his car upside down. Holds onto it, though, for third position. Good stuff. Great start from Kevin Hansen. And he'll have to think Joker strategy already at the end of this lap. Won't have mum or dad on the radio. And so he won't have that help like he does in the real world. But here he goes, an overtake up the inside of Landon Huffman. Kevin Hansen, we know, is very quick. Didn't have the luck to his side last time out. Do the opposite to Landon, and he does exactly that. Nails his brake marker. He'll snatch the lead, but for how long? And that was a super smooth joker. So Hansen will lead lap number two, as Jim Deschamps has unfortunately lost it coming in through that final corner. So looks like Tanner Whitten now scrapping it out to try and catch up to these cars and after serving a slowdown penalty after abusing the anti-cut curb might be looking at a last chance qualifier run for him Huffman though like you said Johnny first outing here the Subaru had a good launch down into turn number uh, excuse me the final cor corner which is turn one uh, for the race mm. slightly bullied Whitten uh, off into the grass if you ask me there but that's what we may see when we have 10 cars flying our way down it's that very same corner yeah, but how fast is that Ford Fiesta there, by the way, of Tanner Witten? By the way, in the background, I'm watching an onboard shot of Jim Deschamp absolutely centered over the anti-cut strips in the final sector. It was quite hilarious. Got to do something in that Nitro Circus star car as we watch them trundle through this right-hander as Witten now all the way up the rear end of Landon Huffman. The Ford Fiesta, some people argue, is the quickest when the track is worn out, other people say it doesn't really matter. We'll wait and find out, I guess, at the end of this event. Well, he's closed the gap to the 75 machine, so who comes down onto the Joker this time around? There's the Here replay for the Oh, Deshaun. look at that! Oh. I'm sorry, Arjuna, but that's incredible. That's at a good 200 kilometers an hour, by the way. I mean, we're not too far from, you know, NASA facilities. Maybe they'll want to take a look at some of those clips. Look at this, oh. though. Huffman sideways over the jump. Whitten takes the anti-cut curve and takes second position as well. Now we've got one more lap to go after this. Both of these cars, Johnny, still have to come down to take their one and only Joker. It's not the first time I've seen that, but it's ever impressive every time, and that's Landon Huffman missing the apex to the inside of the corner. Yoink the handbrake a little too early. And he's whacked the rear end, or the, the front end of that Subaru into the wall. Jim Deschamps retires, means there's only one car that will be eliminated now as he's out of the event. Here's the replay, like I said, just yank, yoink the handbrake a little bit too early. Tanner Witten should advance. And the good news for Tanner Witten is he will start on that second row in the feature. And Kevin Hansen, meanwhile, has had a comfortable race, just like Bakker did once the carnage unfolded behind him. Hansen and Bakker then looking strong, as is Henrik Krogstad. Three of them taking victory in their heats means they'll start to the tail end of the feature. Across the line then comes the beetle for Han Hansen Williams Esports. The 71 car matches his teammate slightly earlier. Widen four seconds adrift. 
will come across the line in second, holding on to a position in that feature. Huffman Deschamps relegated to the last chance qualifiers. And just one of them, Johnny, where four cars will advance to the 10 car feature. Very interesting. That one LCQ, last chance qualifier, or consolation race, depending on your words of choice. As we will look at the grid for that event. So Mario Bonfani Jr. will start from first on the inside. Jim Deschamps right next to him. And then Connor Daly rounds out the front row. So Arjuna, it is a very interesting grid here because, as you said, four will advance, but three will miss out. Tim Stevens starts from seventh. He will start on his own on that back row. But for a motorsport journalist and an editor, he is very quick as a sim racer too. Let's not forget. Look at him. Well dressed in that suit. Well picked, Tim. He's been fun to watch as well, I must say. All of these guys out on the iRacing.com service having a bit of fun. And just a reminder, iRacing.com, if you want to get started, head on over there because every day is race day and you never know, you could find yourself in a public session with one of your racing heroes. Engines rev though, as the lights illuminate for the final time for some of these cars, we will get underway for the last chance qualifiers. For Tim Stevens all by himself, three cars in front of him, three cars in front of them as well. On the inside, Bonfante Jr. didn't have a great launch in the first heat of the night, gets swamped once more as contact is made on the run down into the final corner. And Landon Huffman tries to send a move down the inside. Bullied out by Tim Deschamps, who will lead us across the line. Connor Daly in second, more contact between Bonfante Jr. and Landon Huffman. And Bonfante holds on to a spot in the top three. And unfortunately for Tim Stevens, remains last. And all he did was stay patient at the start, waiting for an incident to unfold. We may have had the cleanest start in All-Star Invitational history. As I say that, let the oh. carnage unfold. Daly's taken off at the airport. He's forgotten that that's across the road. Everybody else is into the wall like it's a destruction derby. Stevens, someone's just reversed into Tim Stevens in the background. And we are going to have to guess who's in first position. I think it might be Landon Huffman. It is Huffman. Down onto the Joker comes Mikey Lawrence. I mean, I don't think any car uh, got away scot-free there. Bonfante Jr. No. kind of kicked things off by uh, doing an aggressive move, trying to make uh, get into the race lead. Dim Jashomp got booted off the road. And then further contact between every other contender. Daily was the car, I think, Johnny, that you saw backed up. And I think our producer has done a great job to isolate the replays already. First, we'll take a look at Bonfante Jr. pulling his way into third uh, before we get to the jump. And then watch this as he launches a move, Johnny, down the inside. Over the anti-cut strips as well. And then he collides with the Nitro Circus star car of Jim Deschamps. Look at Connor Daly here, just right there. Look at that as well. You know, iRacing do simulate the planes at Daytona, but don't get confused. That wasn't a plane. That was the US Air Force. I'd like to say Subaru. It's probably the US Air Force Boeing 747 that uh, Connor Daly's piloting. Here we ride on board from the cockpit view of our plane. Bang, oh. taking off. Doesn't look as exciting on board, does it? It looks almost tame, but I'll, I'll, I will say, I referred to it slightly earlier. After being upside down on his roof in the real world, Johnny, this past weekend at the Texas <laughs> Motor Speedway, I'm sure Daly is very glad that he's racing in the virtual world. Back to live coverage, Mikey Lawrence leads by 2.2 seconds, but he has taken to the Joker. Landon Huffman responds this time around. You can see a puff of smoke as Mikey Lawrence goes very deep. Huffman doesn't get the Joker ideally, but only starts into second as Mikey Lawrence seems to have a bit of internet issues here, Johnny. And that's not good. And we know it's part of sim racing. It's part of the game. Connor Daly, by the way, takes the Joker, but that's not going to matter. As there he is, he's back in fifth position. That was a very ugly incident this week or this past weekend at Texas. And virtually makes the trip to Florida. And in the background, there's Mario Bonfani Jr. Always a bag of entertainment is Mario on the racetrack. Has a very tough job on his hands, racing from his motion cockpit as well, which was fascinating to see. Makes it a little bit harder for himself. Mikey Lawrence, there he is up on screen, leading this race. And like you said, blinking in and out. 
Hopefully his connection lasts to the end of the event. Landon Huffman, good on him. Now remember, you can see on the standings board, your top four advance. It looks like those positions are sealed here on the final lap. Tim Stevens will make it through. Brandon Semenak, if he finishes in fourth, will have pole position for your feature race. And he's had so much contact so far. I think he'll be hoping to just get a clean launch. Into the final corner, though, for Mikey Lawrence to take victory in this last chance qualifier. It's been a bit of a brutal one. Bumper cars, to say the very least. And, you know, fitting that we're only a couple of miles away from the airport. And drivers trying to accumulate as many frequent fly miles as they can. Lawrence Huffman, Stevens, and Semenek then advancing to our feature with Daly, Bonfante Jr., and Jim Deschamps all missing out. Ten cars raring to go, Johnny, and based on what we just saw, this could be a lot more physical than those heat races were. It certainly is. The International Horseshoe to start the race, it's one of my favorite runs down to the first braking zone in Rallycross. It is a 230 meter run down to that first braking zone. It's going to be action-packed heading into the feature. We had a clean start as we look at the results as Mikey Lawrence advances along with Huffman, Stevens, and Semenak. It was a clean start, like I said, until the middle of the lap as we entered the dogleg portion of the Rallycross layout. Uh, unfortunately, though, for Connor Daly, Mario Bonfanti Jr., and Jim Deschamps, we wave goodbye to them for today's All-Star Invitational. And in just a few moments' time, the 10 cars will venture out onto the track here at the World Center of Racing for 10 laps in round two in the iRacing IRX All-Star Invitational. It's all up, though, on the other side of these messages from our partners. Nitro Rallycross took the racing world by storm with the biggest jumps. <laughs> that is what Travis is hoping for. The best drivers. And the most intense action ever. It's come up the inside of Ken. We've got three cars. In 2021, Nitro Rallycross is expanding with five epic races across North America. Designed by Travis Pastrana, each brand new, purpose built course will be the biggest, fastest, and craziest the sport has ever seen. From the mountains to the Great Lakes, the desert and the Sunshine State, Nitro Rallycross is coming to a racetrack near you. Oh, and that goes sideways over the jumpy spins. Maybe there was contact on the way Ken in. Block, unbelievable. Wow, it's like they're launching out of a machine gun. Nitro Rallycross, the series, revving up and taking off this September. live from Daytona International Speedway in round two in the iRacing IRX All-Star Invitational presented by Yokohama. There's one thing that separates first place from the rest of the pack, the finish line. High performance race inspired Yokohama Advan tires give you the drive to win. Discover Advan at YokohamaTire.com. My name is Arjuna Kankipati. Alongside for today's action is Jonathan Simon with Tyler Maxson down in the production booth controlling all of the actions. We've said goodbye, Johnny, to the first of our three drivers today and 10 now of Motorsport's finest getting ready to go racing at Daytona International Speedway. And from the back are your quickest drivers in this race. You've got a World RX race winner, another World RX race winner, some RX2 champions, and ARX2 champions as well. You've got dirt racers towards the front. You've got a freestyle motorbike rider, or freestyle, sorry, mountain bike rider, not motorbike rider in Brandon Semenak. And you've also got a motorsport journalist. You've got a whole pick of the litter here heading into this feature race. All I know is it's going to be entertaining. We've got the biggest field we've had on offer so far today at Daytona. The run down to the International Horseshoe. I spoke about it. 230 meters to that first braking zone. 
You've got three wide action heading into there. You can just see it in shot on the left-hand side where that joker lap is. It makes things very interesting at the beginning of our events. And crucially, drivers cannot take the joker the first time around. So it does mean that, like you said, Johnny, you're almost inviting three wide action. And as we've seen, especially in that last chance qualifier, uh, the driver that can get the best run off of that corner, across the start finish line and down into turn one can sometimes spring a surprise. Yep, certainly can. And uh, partly cloudy skies out there too should make the car, well, there we are, there you can see the weather. So partly cloudy skies, just make the engines run a little bit more uh, with some more power as well. A bit more cooling going in there as well. Not too much wind speed like we had in the Formula One race over the weekend, which unsettled a lot of the cars. But 41 degrees Celsius track temp, Arjuna, that should make things a little bit uh, t untidy heading into some of these corners. And what, it's what, 69% uh, tarmac or so, Johnny? That's what you were saying at the start of this broadcast. Yeah, it's a 69% asphalt, 31% dirt split here at Daytona. And you can already see the cool groove going into the circuit during the dirt section here. We've had some track resets, some virtual ones, but none for the feature race. We had one uh, earlier on during one of the heats, but uh, that's it as we head over and we will take a look at our grid for today's one and only feature race of the All-Star Invitational. And so starting out front, Brandon Semenak, who's been a bit of a bowling ball uh, so far in today's action. In the middle on the front row will be Tim Stevens in the 64 with Landon Huffman. Looks strong in the 75 Subaru, rounding out the front row. Mikey Lawrence, Tanner, Tanner Whidden, and Mike McKinney, row two in today's field. And then we make our way back to Wars, where the RX superstars find themselves lining up. Connor Martell in seventh, Kevin Hansen in eighth. Andreas Backerud and Henrik Krogstad on the final row of this grid. Andreas Backerud won a couple of weeks ago at the Virtual Brands Hatch. What can he do here today, Johnny? It will be a task to try and work his way through the carnage of nine cars in front of him. Yeah, we'll wait and see. We saw Sage Karam from the back of the pack win this event in our All-Star Invitational last year. And the seas parted for him. Everybody crashed ahead and he made his way through and won this event. Here we go. Lights about to illuminate. Engines begin to rev as well. Tension in the air for round two. The iRacing IRX All-Star Invitational powered by Yokohama. Great launch from the front row, but an even better launch from Tanner Whidden who gets checked up. And there's contact with Martel, I do believe, sent down the inside from Backward. And there's Carnage in through the final corner, scampering into the race lead though. I believe it's Brandon Semenak with Tim Stevens in close pursuit with Tanner Whidden up into the podium positions. And that was Connor Martel and Mike McKinney involved in incidents. Backerud and Krogstad also involved in incidents. Backerud's on his roof. There he is in the background, the Monster Energy Subaru on his roof and almost flipped over the barriers. The Norwegian sending himself back to Norway. Just forgot to wrap himself up in a box as he put his address on that package. Daytona International Airport. It's across the road, fellas. Let's not get mixed up here as Semenak leads the field. Steven second. This is your first opportunity to take the Joker. And there is the fiesta of Tanner Witten, who takes to it right there and snatches the lead from Canadian Semenak. And now checks up Semenak in the 180. Witten gets sideways over the jump as well. Tim Stevens will be very happy to take a look at this. I think return to sender in the case of Andreas Bakarudu. We'll be fortunate that damage is turned off for today's activities. He yeah. finds himself 16 seconds off the leader, but still out there and circulating with eight laps still to go. So the only car that came down to take the Joker on lap number one was Witten in this leading group, Connor Martel uh, further back in the pack, but it is starting to look, Johnny, like a, about a top five race here with Landon Huffman in the 75 having an outside chance of a win. Yep, certainly. Quickest right now in your top five is Kevin Hansen. As Tanner Witten is all over the rear end of Brandon Semenak, he has to apply the brakes in that Ford Fiesta and makes his way past Brandon Semenak, who is very quick. Semenak's Moved his career from mountain bikes to rally cross cars. Here's a replay of the start. So backwards come piling into the top four, almost taking the entire field out. And there <laughs> is, now was that Connor Martel I saw flipped upside down almost? It was. It was. And I think Mikey Lawrence, by the way, got on the grass even earlier and kind of sent himself sideways into the oh, malaise. 
as Baccarat just being a little oh. bit naughty, taking advantage of the no Goodness. damage. And like I say, be glad that Return to Sender turned on in that case. Stevens loses out to Krogstad, though, as we come across the line, starting lap number four. Widen and Seminac starting to try and build an advantage, but things are looking pretty rosy for Kevin Hansen in third position. I'm sorry, but that, that's... Andreas has been very good in all our all-star invitational events, but that was a horrific start by the Norwegian. Almost, uh, he flipped his own car. I thought he collected someone. I just saw him uh, swirling around in the background on a different camera shot, on his onboard shot, and I thought he had contact. That was all on his own, but anyway, focusing back on this lead battle, is that Kevin Hansen I see taking to the Joker? And it is. Kevin Hansen into second, though. Tanner Witten has taken the Joker. So if Kevin Hansen, the Swede, is going to win this race, he'll have to make the pass on the racetrack as we ride on board with the 22-year-old. I think what was happening is Semenak was slow that last time around and Hansen decided he had to respond now. Gap 1.5 between the 11 and the 71. What can Witten do? He's, like I said, won, well not won at this track, excuse me, got a podium back in 2015 and GRC lights came here, and then in 2016, he took the step up into the Supercar Series, not at Daytona, but a couple of top tens in that campaign. Here comes Krogstad down to the Joker. Will he slot in in front of Semenak? He does. So Williams, Hansen, Esports, Johnny, they run second and third position. Good stuff from them. They, uh, the Hansen brothers definitely value Henrik Krogstad as a talent. As we watch some more action down the back of the pack, this is Tim Stevens in the 64. Not the default iRacing number, it's his chosen number for this event. Right behind him is Conor Martel, who we know is arguably one of the quickest on the right day here in Rallycross Cars. So he'll be making his way through the field for some points. He's already taken to the Joker. Stevens might as well go for it now and get some clear track. We'll see if he heads to it. And a good decision there by Stevens. Where does he cycle out then in comparison to Landon Huffman just in front of Huffman? Huffman, a fairly active iRacer as well, having some fun competing here on the Rallycross side of things as they work their way over the jump. Back to Hansen, who's all over now, the rear end of Tanner Widen through the right-hand corner. They work, slight yank on the handbrake for the 71 machine. And we'll have three laps to go at the line. Widen taking full advantage of track limits as you are allowed to here, Johnny, as they work their way down into the International Horseshoe. Tough braking zone from 220 kilometers an hour. All the way down to 100 through the apex. And we look on the rear end of Tanner Witten. And then you can see Krogstad in the background as well, flying through the jump. He's in with an opportunity for victory. The two Hanson Williams esports drivers will be working together here to hopefully shove Witten out of the way. And there we go. Kevin Hanson bullies his way past. Witten tries to squeeze him into the wall. That'll take them both out. The seas part. Now, did Krogstad go through? There he is, Henry Krogstad, into the lead with a few laps remaining. It will be Krogstad versus Widen, but now Semenak might try and take advantage. More bumper cars between the two of them as Widen launches himself over the anti-cut curb and over the inside of Krogstad as well. Wonderful car control from two drivers who have lots of experience at dueling it out wheel to wheel on the virtual, not in the virtual dirt, real world dirt as well, Johnny. And they are showing each other just how much fun they can have racing across the globe. Certainly, here's a replay of Krogstad Watching the lead battle unfold, you saw Witten wasn't happy with, Krog, uh, with Hansen's bump and run. Shoved him out of the way. Krogstad nailed the throttle, did not lift, and makes Full. his way into the lead. Full commitment there. White flag will be in the air this time around. Krogstad's slightly deep under the brakes, but he is looking fairly comfortable, Johnny. Witten seven tenths as we come across the line. Well, the pressure's on for Krogstad. As we said, race with, in the Sim Races World Championship. Did a decent job of it too. Your 2020 RX2 champion, Witten's going for it. He went for the win and he sent it. He's turned around that hand second position to Brandon Semenak. And Tanner Witten will still be on the podium if he keeps it together. But what a victory this will be for the Norwegian Henry Krogstad. The young man makes his way through to the final braking zone of the day as we're still racing here down the back of the pack but Krogstad will win.
So that's Huffman scrapping it out with McKinney. Out of the final corner, though, for the Williams Handsport eSports driver. Competed in our World Championship last year. Who's that flipping end over end in the background? Might have been Tim Stevens. I'm not sure exactly who there is. There you can see oh, it no. is Stevens still accumulating those frequent flyer miles. So drama all the way till the end, Johnny. I will say these IRX All-Star Invitationals, just a little bit of fun for all of these drivers to get under their system. I definitely enjoyed this event today. We had a mixture of some hilarious incidents. Some, there's still somebody crashing there at the end of the jump. Is that Stevens again? I'm not sure. But uh, we've had a, a mixture of comical incidents, great racing, a good battle for the lead at the end of the day. Oh, boy, did I love it. Here are the results up on screen. Henry Krogstad finally wins one of these. Good on you, Henry Krogstad. He takes the victory, your 2020 RX2 champion, followed by Brandon Semenak, who's always been up there in Rallycross, yet to see him win one of these feature races. Tanner Witten with an opportunity and led most of that race, ends up in the third spot and on the podium, a virtual podium, still counts, with Kevin Hansen, who had the lead for, I'd say, a good probably 20 meters there before Witten shoved him back into the barrier on the inside. A very dirty move from Tanner Witten. Mike McKinney didn't see much of him today, but he brings that Fiesta home in fifth. Andreas Backrood, how about that there, Arjuna? After flipping his car, still ended up 10 seconds behind leader Henry Krogstad for the victory. No damage, I think, did mean that we had a lot more fun than we could have. Martel, a couple of incidents late in the race, drops him to eighth with Mikey Lawrence ninth. Tim Stevens classified in 10th, but the gap there does not seem right. I wonder if I racing just a little bit confused at what we saw there. But the pro races are done, Johnny. We'll now head across the pond to the circuit Barcelona, Catalonia. But I hope before we get there, we get to take a look at uh, Tim Stevens going airborne at the closing stages of this race. Let's have a look at this one. So this would have had to have been over the anti-cut strips. Oh, we sent it. That's surely, we should ask Brandon Semenak if that's, I mean, that's obviously a 1080. I would say that's probably a 10,080 at the moment. Oh, man. And thankfully, damage not enabled at the same time. Well, it's a, I'm not sure that's how he wanted his race to end. But like I said, just a little bit of fun for all these guys to have. And like I said, Johnny, now let's look forward to the Circuit Barcelona Catalonia. We're done here at the World Center of Racing. Quick jaunt over to the airport that's just on the other side of the road. Fly ourselves to Barcelona for the first competitive outing for this track on the iRacing schedule. Today's new cars have upwards of 100 computers in them and a dashboard rivaled only by a commercial airliner. But wouldn't it be nice to really know what all that does for you? At Roadshow, we demystify the world of modern transportation with reviews of your next car, the latest news on what's changing the industry, and videos covering every screen and every new feature you'll encounter in the driver's seat. Get informed, get smart, and get going with Roadshow. In 2018, Nitro Rallycross took the racing world by storm with the biggest jumps. <laughs> that is what Travis is hoping for. The best drivers. And the most intense action ever. It's gonna be inside of Ken. We've got three cars. In 2021, Nitro Rallycross is expanding with five epic races across North America. Designed by Travis Pastrana, each brand new, purpose-built course will be the biggest, fastest, and craziest the sport has ever seen. From the mountains to the Great Lakes, the desert and the Sunshine State, Nitro Rallycross is coming to a racetrack near you. Oh, and that goes sideways over the jumpy spins. Maybe there was contact on the way Can't in. block, unbelievable. Wow, it's like they're launching out of a machine gun. Nitro Rallycross, the series, revving up and taking off this September.
Nitro Circus is back with the action-packed You Got This Tour. Top athletes in FMX, skate, BMX, scooter, and more are ready to get the party started. Throwing down huge world's firsts with more crazy contraptions, more insane stunts, and more high adrenaline fun than ever before. Get ready, because we're coming to a city near you. I don't even know what's happening anymore. Get tickets now at NitroCircus.com. Welcome back to iRacing Live and Race Spot TV for round two coverage in the 2021 iRacing IRX All-Star Invitational presented by Yokohama. There's one thing that separates first place from the rest of the pack, the finish line. High performance race inspired Yokohama Advan tires give you the drive to win. Discover Advan at yokohamatire.com. My name is Arjuna Kankipati. Alongside for today's action is Jonathan Simon with Tyler Maxson down in the production booth controlling all of the action. We've made the trip over to the circuit Barcelona, Catalonia, Johnny, but let's just have a quick recap of what we saw from the world center of racing. It was Henrik Krogstad taking victory in an action-packed 10-lap race. Yeah, it certainly was. I love that lead battle at the end of the day. Some hustling and bustling, like we mentioned, it got physical, a lot of extracurricular activity. We'll speak to Tanner Witten and find out his thoughts on it all, but he certainly didn't want Kevin Hansen taking the lead the way he did, just trying to shove him out of the way. Um, looking forward to this one, though, at Barcelona later on. Our sim races, the best in the world coming up. We've got some new faces to learn, old faces return. I love saying that one. Uh, it's going to be a good one. And I tell you what, we've dialed up the phone lines over to the virtual uh, Daytona International Speedway, and Jonathan Simon is standing by with Tanner Witten. Tanner, so let's talk about that lead battle. You had most of the race in the bag in that Fiesta. Were you happy with Kevin Hansen's move at the hairpin? Well, I think a lot of that was, was my fault. I I decided to, to pinch him a little bit at the end, and that was that was my fault that we got together. But those guys, man, they were just so fast and, and practicing qualifying and just as soon as I saw clean air, I just had to figure out a way to, to, to try to keep the lead. But I knew knew as soon as they were behind me in the relative, they, they were coming. So just um just excited and, and grateful to be invited. It's been three or four years since I've been in a real car. And uh, me, and, me and Chris go way back with, in the old GRC days. So big thanks to him for, for letting me, um, let me participate. Yeah, 100%. And you know what? I, you did race here. Daytona was in the GRC schedule from 2014 to 2016. Was it fun? Did you have memories returning to this layout? It was a little bit different when you raced there. Yeah, we, we ran um, in, in 2015 and 2016 when I was there, uh, ran what we have as a short layout here in iRacing. And um, yeah. in 2016, we were, we were lucky enough to, to, to win um, in, the, in the lights class. Um, so being as, being as it's my home track now, I live about 10, 15 minutes away from the speedway. Just um, really wanted to, to, to at least get on the podium. So we're, I'm, I'm really, really happy to, that we were able to, to get a, a P3. And just so I'm not wrong, that wasn't your only win in GRC. I remember you had a couple there, I think. Yeah, we won. Um, we won in 2015 in um, in Detroit. Detroit. Um, yeah. the, the the first round in Detroit, and um, and then uh, here the next year in 2016. So, um, yeah, really, really grateful to have those opportunities along the way. And hopefully, mate, you'll be back for some of these in the next few weeks. There are some more exciting circuits on offer for you. Sonoma next week. You ever race? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I, I don't even think, think I've done any official sessions in Sonoma uh, in a rallycross car and I racing. So it should be um, should be fun. So, yeah, I was was um, was excited that this came back because last year with work I wasn't able to to do many of them. But now that I've got mm -hmm. a a real job, I can can be home and and um, <laughs> make all of them. Well, what's that real job now? Surely something to do with motorsport. Uh, not necessarily motorsport. I work for a um, for a uh, uh, center console um, fishing boat company. Um, we we build um, nice. just center nice center console f uh, fishing boats. So um, it's a it's a nice change of pace from from motorsports, but it's still still horsepower. Well, look at the bright side. Final thing I'll tell you is I'll be your businessman here. If you ever come back into motorsport, you've got a sponsor there for you. Surely your workplace supports you back on the grid. Maybe potentially, we know Nitro RX is happening in North America. You can get a car on the grid there, hopefully. 
Yeah, I saw. We'll we'll, we'll definitely be at the um, the firm one in spirit. Just uh, it'll be be fun to go and watch and part, and just kind of see how 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 Travis has been doing things. So, no, but just thankful for for Chris and the opportunity, Traction Factory, my sponsor, and and my wife watching in the other room. Just um just all the support, uh, all the support I could possibly need. Yep, lovely. Good to speak to you, Tano. Always good to see you uh, in Rallycross. Good to see you back again, virtual or real. Yeah, appreciate it, guys. Thanks for putting this on. It's um, it's always fun. Broadcasts are awesome to watch, and we'll um, we'll see you guys next week. Perfect. Thanks. So there we go, Arjuna. Tana Witten, who, again, had an opportunity of victory. Unfortunately, just fell short at the end of the day. And we've dialed up another driver straight away. Brandon Semenuk is standing by. Johnny, take it away. Brandon Semenuk, we have never spoken to you after an All-Star Invitational. It's good to have you, mate. That was another interesting event for you. Oh, so close to victory, though. Yeah, thanks. It was, uh, it's been a while since I've got to do one of the Rallycross events with you guys, so it's fun to jump back in and, and uh, have a little bit of success, I guess. Hey, and I might be wrong, mate, but is that your best result in an All-Star Invitational so far? I think you've had a podium before, but never second. Yeah, I think I've I've gotten close, maybe like a top five, but uh, no, never up there. So yeah, it's cool to get on there. I think I think starting on the the, the front of the grid helped, but um, starting to figure it out again. And some people who might not know you, Brandon, you were initially at the start of your career a, a free ride mountain bike rider. Now you've headed into motorsport. Surely the two sports translate in a sense in terms of control and other stuff. Some people might not think about it from two wheels to four without a motor, but there are some things you can take. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, still, still heavily into the mountain bike side of things as well as motorsport stuff. And I think just like weight transfer and read and grip and, and those things translate uh, quite a bit. But obviously, mountain biking, you use your body so much to, to do those things and, and having the pedals in the... And sim racing for you, it's, it's something you've been enjoying because you've been quick. We hope you've been enjoying it though. Yeah, man, I've I've been enjoying it a bunch. It's it's great to jump on that, especially uh, with the last year or so with less travel and stuff like that. Just to be able to get on and, and go race your buddies. And so one thing as well. So your previous success here, you've had X Games, a silver medal X Games at Munich. Uh, sorry, at the Munich X Games as well. You've been a three-time gold medalist in mountain bikes. You've competed in rally events for, I think, the past decade now as well, and you've won many events there too. Is there anything else on the agenda for you apart from rally or mountain bike riding? Uh, at this point, I'm, I'm pretty happy. Like, uh, I love jumping in the car whenever whenever I get the chance, and then obviously mountain biking is my day-to-day, -day, so just kind of picking away at it. And, you know, there's there's little bucket list things I want to keep checking off, and obviously hopefully more success in the, in the motorsports world in the coming uh, year or even years. And we'll see you back at Sonoma next week, I hope. Yeah, I'll try and make it out for sure. Yeah, perfect. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Brandon Seminac who joins us. Thanks for coming along, mate. And I hopefully see him along next week at Sonoma. Uh, Juna, it is an action-packed Barcelona event coming up. The best of the best in the sim racing universe. Oh, I can't wait for this one. Qualifying in about five minutes' time. And we, a couple of weeks ago, kicked off our visit to some of the newest IRX tracks. Brands Hatch produced an interesting race. Our world champion, Johan Haas, did take victory there. And he returns now to sunny Barcelona for us to get started. A track, Johnny, that I've had the pleasure of trying to do some hot laps and seeing how competitive I can be compared to sim racing's finest. The answer is several seconds off the pace, but it's a very tight and twisty track. It can be hard to really make sure that you get the passes done. Qualifying is going to be crucial, as is staying out of trouble. It's definitely one of the most difficult circuits to overtake on. You'll need to pull off most of your overtakes through the Joker lap because you get such a good run coming out of there. It's a 1.14 kilometer circuit, 0.7 miles, depending on your units of choice. It's one of three rallycross circuits that round itself anti-clockwise. 10 corners, it's not the most. Daytona has 11, that's the circuit with the most corners out there. One of three brand new rallycross circuits that we brought to iRacing in the last few months. Now it's a 60% 60 60 asphalt, 40% dirt split. Very interesting layout. The Joker Delta, it's 2.6 seconds at the merge, but if you take it in clear track, it's actually 3.6 seconds. You gain an extra second to the end of turn two. So very, very interesting there. Uh, the Joker entry is located towards the end of the lap. It's the Formula One chicane that we can um, 
that, that we use here today. Now, we've got a multitude of layouts. The finish line is the old finish line we had in <laughs> FIA World RX, but the start line is the new one. It sometimes can be a bit confusing, and, and there are strategies that you can use to, to build up speed, of course, because the Joker is uh, the one that, of course, runs longer as well. I do believe we have one more interview standing by. Unfortunately, Henrik Krogstad unable to get on the virtual phone. We've got uh, his teammate instead. Kevin Hansen is standing by with Jonathan Simone. Uh, Kevin, first of all, you got me? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Finally. <laughs> ah, finally. Perfect. It took us about a good whole 20 minutes. Let me tell you something, mate. Uh, you almost had victory in that Daytona race. It was exciting to watch. Uh, Tanner did obviously apologize, did not mean to take you out. But hey, at the end of the day, good fun racing on the sim. I mean, that's Rallycross and I'm, I'm super stoked. I've had a clean race this time. I mean, last time for me, I was... I've never been that good in a qualifying run uh, that I was in round one and I was really bummed to, to miss out on all the action there. So really good to get to the main event this time uh, and fighting for the win. Of course, I'm fortunate to, to go taken out and I'm sure it's a race incident. So um, um, it's, it's really unfortunate, but uh, hey, we got the win with Yellow Squad and Henrik and uh, I was on the Discord with him and he, he sends his regards and he was super stoked about the win. So cheers. Yeah, last week when you out-qualified Kevin, he... Oh, not Kevin, sorry, when you out-qualified uh, Henrik, it's uh, actually a very good effort because, remember, he qualified for the Sim Races World Championship. He was competing with the best on the Sim. So for you, are you going to compete with the best on the Sim this year as a side hobby? <laughs> well, uh, if, if, uh, if we go again to, to Brands, I can have a go because it seems like there was a good track for me. So, <laughs> I mean, the level of, of the, of the Hanson Williams eSports team is incredible. I work with the guys uh, a little between the races and... Uh, I mean, Josh Fox and the other guys, you know, they are incredible. And everybody at Williams uh, working with us here, um, you know, doing such a great job. So sim racing is super, super hard. I mean, even if I'm good in reality, uh, I have a lot to learn still on, on iRacing and, and by my teammates. So uh, for sure, if I do a bit more practice, uh, the season is not yet here. So uh, I guess then we can have a go. And I was joking around today. We were talking Joker strategy when we were riding on board with you. And I said, you don't have mum or dad on the radio to help you out this time out. It's a little bit different on the sim. It, it's very different. Here I'm all on my own. And in Sweden, it's actually just two minutes to midnight. So I think <laughs> nobody even in my family is watching, to be honest. Uh, so full on my, on my own. But that's so great to have Henrik with me. Um, it's, uh, you know, a team effort to, to get this win. And... Uh, we're working together in the, in the heat races. I was spotting for him a bit and the same other way around. So, um, like you say, it, it's very different to the races uh, on, on, on the World Championship and in Nitro. Um, for sure, I would like to have all my family here helping me out. But uh, it's also good to, to do a bit on your own. And final question for you. So, what's on the agenda for 2021 in terms of racing? We know you want to win one of those FIA World Rallycross Championships. Although you've got a lot of talent to beat. We know your brother's won a world championship. Christofferson's won a whole lot of those two. When's it going to be Kevin Hansen on top? Well, I, I want it more than ever, I can tell you that. And I'm, I'm working very, very hard to, to be, uh, you know, the best version of myself that I can be. And to be here on iRacing, warming up for the season, this is giving me huge, huge... Uh, I think steps forward to, to be ready for when, when the first races arrive. Um, I want to be world champion uh, this year and uh, this is for sure uh, a target of mine. Um, and I want to do the best as I can and let's see if, if uh, we can put all the pieces together here at Hansa Motorsport with the car and, and with the team and, and have some luck on our side. I believe that uh, we can fight for the world championship. Mm, nice. And Kevin, before we let you go, and I'm sure go to sleep as well, I want to ask you about Barcelona. We're about to see it in action on iRacing for the very first time. Mm. You finished second uh, back in 2019. What are your thoughts on this track? And if you want to make a pass, where is the one place that you really think it can happen? Oh, I had, I had a really, really good time on, on the iRacing Barcelona track just a, a week ago before the Brands race with my, with my mates at, at Williams. And I made a pass um, on, uh, on Sami Mati Trogen down in the long left on the tarmac. Uh, so there, I think the driver should have an open eye in the mid corner there if, it, if, it's, a, if it's a door open. Um, such an, a great track. And on iRacing, it really got me feeling like it was the real deal. And I think that track on this game, I can really, really use it for preparation when we go there in the world championship so awesome to have the track on board in the in the in the sim 
Well, you heard it from an FIA race winner. Thanks for joining us, Kevin. Hopefully we'll see you back in action a couple of, in just a week's time, excuse me, from Sonoma. Qualifying underway for the Sim Professionals, Johnny, and just like it was for the real world superstars, five minutes, and they'll get three minutes to track all to themselves to set their fastest lap times. And did you see the grandstands where the people have to sit here at the start? So that's where the start line ends into the first braking zone. Knowing some of the incidents we had in the All-Star Invitational, I feel like we could see some cars flipping in to the virtual stands. Thankfully, though, they are empty. How sad is that heading into this sim racing event? Not much virtual fans in attendance. They're not going to be empty for too long, though. You can see as we take a look at cars on track, here is Kevin Ellis Jr., the number 98 car and already working into the Joker lap for qualifying, taking an interesting line here to try and build up the most speed that he can. And so we will check in with Kevin Ellis in just Where's a few <laughs> moments time. Well, the great thing, Johnny, about this, like we said, first competitive outing on this track, so there might be a few competitive advantages that drivers have found. And the iRacing team has a couple of months before our World Championship gets underway to take a look right on board, Johnny, for a lap with Kevin Ellis. So where is he coming up to now? He's coming up toward... This is the tricky middle part of the lap here. So tiptoe your, your way through here. Don't push too hard. There's not too much lap time to gain there. There's more to be lost. And then on towards now the Grand Prix section. Back onto the Rallycross layout. Throw the car into here, but hug the wall to the inside. The exit into here sets up the entry to the jump. Stay to the left-hand side of the racetrack over the jump. And then push to the right-hand side. Joker is there to the right-hand side. The long way around through the Formula 1 chicane. We're going to take our way to the reverse section of the layout. He throws it into the gravel to maximize lap time there. That time from Kevin Ellis Jr. Now, where does it put him? I haven't seen him up on screen did he potentially collect now we know if you hit a barrier or hit an anti-cut strip too hard you collect what's called a zero x and that may have happened there arjuna to kevin ellis jr i believe he clipped the wall in the final corner just trying to like you said minimize the distance and and get the fastest lap time that he can let's check in with one of the set esports drivers as they begin one of their qualifying lap times as well, coming down into the Joker and sweeping the momentum across the start finish line. Let's jump on board if we can and just run through this high speed left hander with Yoni Olakainen in the 44 car. Wonderful visor cam view here, as you'll see just how smooth, Johnny, the drivers try to be using all of the surface as well. You can see those anti cut curves on the inside, the number 44 car clambering all over them. Pole position last time out in the All Star Invitational. And he's had many of them in the Sim Racers World Championship. Well, sorry, I say many of them. He's only had one. Oli Kainen now through the jump and towards the end of the lap here. This is a, exactly what he sees from the cockpit view. Through the final couple of corners. Don't hit that wall on the left-hand side. Does he snatch pole position on his final run? He does by one hundredth of a second over John Robertson. Can Robertson respond, though? He's coming through to complete his final qualifying lap time as well, I do believe. Working his way through the mid-infield uh, section then. Tight to the inside wall, over the jump, setting up for the final corner there. This is the crucial time for Robertson. Oh, so close to our World Championship just a couple of months ago. What's the lap time going to be there? He maximizes the final <laughs> corner. Don't think that put him faster, though, Johnny. He stays in second as Apex Racing Team 2, 3, and 4. But Yoni Olakainen, a 44 car on provisional pole position. Now, this is interesting. Half has used all his quali runs, I think. That's it. So he went, you take the Joker to get a quicker run. You gain one second by taking the Joker all the way on the run down to turn two here where you saw Johan Harth off the racetrack. How about that from Oli Kainen? Two poles in a row. He's definitely the quickest at this point of the year where everybody's still a little bit rusty heading into mid-year rallycross and heading into pro qualifiers. Sindre Silva, by the way. How awesome is that? Qualifies fifth. There's the 71. This is Atu Hakaleto, who races in his first <laughs> rallycross event, sends it into the beach. You know what? If this wasn't virtual you wouldn't even need a crane. You'd <laughs> essentially just, like, what would you do? You, you, you'd, you'd have to, I think you're done for. I think you'd have to red flag the entire day there'd be so many cars in that uh, gravel trap. Well, there wouldn't be as much gravel in the trap as there would be out on the track as well. 20 seconds left, and it does look as though 28 cars, most of them done with their qualifying attempt. So Yoni Olakainen with pole of 44.57. 
at John Robertson, a 44-6-7. Just one hundredth of a second between the two of them. Johan Hart, the world champion in third, with Kevin Ellis making it three Apex Racing Team cars in the top four for qualifying. They will split themselves amongst the heats as qualifying comes to a close. And we go trackside here from the circuit Barcelona, Catalonia to take a look at our starting grid in heat number one. No invert, so Ola Kainen will start on the front row alongside Sindre Silva, the Luke Fournier, and Bo Albert, row two. Quinton Violate for the RHE Esports team, alongside fellow Frenchman Luis Lejeune, and all by himself in seventh, Adam Alderson will round out our seven car field here in heat number one. 28 cars, Johnny. I do believe we're looking at four heat races in which two cars transfer to the feature in each one of them. Yep, exactly. So just like we had for the World Championship, and then one from each LCQ. No inverts, as you said, like we had for the All-Star Invitational. It's all business here on the run down to Turn 1 at Barcelona. Very similar to Daytona in a sense. It's about a 200-meter run down to that first braking zone. You can, or you, you can't take the Joker here the first time you pass by because you haven't crossed that finish line. So they'll have to wait next time by as well. At uh, 2.6 to 3.6 seconds, that joke emerged. There's the grid. Lights illuminate. Engines rev for the first race of the day. What can Olakainen do from the front row here? Alongside is Sindre Silva. Great qualifying performance from him. And uh, two wide all the way through the pack. Silva on the outside with a slightly better launch. Contact made behind. Going to check up all those cars. Four of them stacked up with one another. But Olakainen and Sindre Silva, first and second, scamper into the infield. Luke Fournier in third. With Bo, no, excuse me, Bo Albert at the tail end of this field. Adam Alderson up into fourth already, Johnny. Yep, good start from him. How about Sindre Silva here? Can't take the joke at this first time you pass by. Just throw the way the rules are. Silva's bullied out of the way there by Luke Fournier. We've had a lot of contact. This is the first official start we've seen in a World Championship unofficial event in iRacing and it looks just like it does in the real world here they tip through tiptoe through the middle sector very close between these drivers into the barrier i think in the background was adam alderton and he's lost progress now it's all sorts of chaos bo albert was getting his elbows out works his way back up into fourth where he qualified slinging themselves back onto the dirt now to complete lap number one it's olakainen from silva from fournier from albert the top four have not changed and into the final corner, Olakainen with a 1.7 second advantage as a couple of cars going down onto the Joker. It's Adam Alderton and Louis Lejeune that have committed early in this race. Yeah, good stuff from Lejeune. Now, did Alderton take to the Joker? I'm not sure he did. No, so it was just Louis, uh, Louis Lejeune. And that will light up at the end of the lap. So there it is. Lejeune's the only driver to take to the Joker. So at the moment, Olikainen leads from Silva. They are the two drivers that will advance. That's your cutoff point as they enter the middle section here. And you occasionally see some overtakes in Rallycross, but this circuit is one of the most difficult to overtake on on the Rallycross service. And you take a look here. It's all, as you jump, as you go over the jump, it's about setting yourself up. Albert does the opposite of what the cars in front do. He commits, as does the car behind. Now some clean air the Australian has to try and use this to his advantage. Olakainen, 2.7 seconds clear, looking comfortable to advance his way into the 10-lap feature. Who will join him? As Sindre Silva and Luke Fournier still very close. As, side, as we go to the side-by-side -side action, you can see Albert on the left having taken the Joker, Johnny, with Sindre Silva and company on the right-hand side. Yeah, certainly. I'm going to have to do this race without live timing, so I'm going to rely on pictures that speak a thousand words. And that Joker, now, arguably, when it's the long way around, it's not a shortcut like it was at Daytona. You lose time by taking the Joker. The interesting part about it is you don't have to take it on the final lap here. As we see Bo Albert and Luke Fournier squabble it out. So Luke Fournier is ahead of Bo Albert there by taking the Joker. So just your top two yet to take it. But... My point is, if you take it on the final lap, you lose that extra second you gain all the way on that run down to turn two. Here's the battle for P3. This will be a transfer position if Oli Kynan or Silva, if anything goes wrong between those two cars. Penultimate lap, you should see Oli Kynan and Silva take to the Joker. Problem is, though, if they're squabbling this hard, it's just allowing Sindre Silva to build up the buffer and 
as expected. We are expecting him to come down to the Joker this time around. He does blink, but Ola Kainen, so comfortable in the race lead, decides to wait till the final lap. Watch for the merge here. Silver holds on, and he's got a bit of an advantage over Fournier and Albert coming down into turn one, Johnny. He should be comfortable to complete this lap. Yeah, certainly. So Oli Kainen, I mean, that's not a good decision, but he's leading by so much. There isn't really a bad decision for the Finn. He will start from pole when he wins this heat later on. Silva will join him, the ever-improved Norwegian of Sindre Silva. Your Norwegian's faring very well today. Henry Krogstad, a winner. Sindre Silva potentially will advance to another feature. Didn't make many of them for the Nitro Circus team in the World Championship. There's Oli Kainen to the Joker. So it's a 3.6 second Joker there at the merge, 2.6 all the way to the run down to turn two. Silver joins him and with some style there across the line. And lighting up the rear tires, that's for sure. So Forney, Albert, Lejeune, Alderton and Via Latte, who we didn't talk about at all in that race, will have to make their way through the launch chance qualifiers. Let's take a look then at the heat at uh, the starting order for heat number two. We've got some very strong contenders to watch out for. At the front, it will be John Robertson in the 86 machine alongside Jano Leskinen with Rasmus Toiminen and Atu Aka Akaleto rounding out row number two. Jacob Raffos in fifth alongside Lucas Cram, the Canadian, and Lucas Kraus, uh, Luke Kraus, excuse me, will round out another seven car heat. These Scandinavian names, Johnny, sometimes they just get you. Not only that, but the Lucas and Luke got you too. Luke Cram, a uh, Lucas Cram, it got me just then. Lucas Cram, Luke Kraus. That's a tongue twister with them right next to each other on the grid. By the way, Jano Leskinen, born 2008. Jacob Rafos, born 2007. Have a think about a memory you had from 2006. Those two weren't even conceived. It's a 200 meter run down to turn one here. John Robertson, you're almost world champion in 2020 looking to make an improvement in 2021 and it starts here in these all-star uh, in these all-star events get some confidence for yourself heading into this first braking zone there was a track reset that has taken place as well so we will watch out in the course of these heats for ever train changing track conditions engines rev and the car squat down we get underway I believe that's Lucas uh, Cram at the back who did not launch. The set eSports teammates uh, rub doors as we work our way side by side into this middle sector. Don't think Robertson can hold on for now. He will take the long way around as they funnel their way three wide. He does just about hold on as Leskinen in the Williams eSports machine in second with Rasmus Toymanen in fourth chasing down Jacob Rafos, his teammate. What a start here. Toiminen's got nowhere to go. He looks quick, but he's got to deal with Leskinen and Rafos up ahead of him, the two young men, as now Toiminen goes for a move. Remember, he raced here in Super 1600, makes a move here on the Sim 2. Brilliant job by Rasmus Toiminen from a driver who was on his roof here in the real world just a few months ago. What is it with drivers and being up on their roof, Johnny? We talked about that way too many times today for my own comfort. On board with Toiminen as Leskinen slides a bit wide in through this middle part of the track. Opens the gap up to Robertson as we work our way down into the final corner here on lap number one. It's one second the advantage between first and second. No one down onto the Joker in the top four cars. Yeah, which is interesting. You'd think Toiminen or somebody would do something different. Rasmus Toiminen looks quick enough to pull off another overtake here on Jano Leskinen, trying to shove his way up the inside. We saw Ken Block do that a few years ago. It didn't go well for him, and it hasn't gone well for Toiminen because Jacob Rafos has spun the fin around. I'm not sure if that was contact between the teammates or if it was Toiminen very much hooking himself on that anti-cut curb, using it to try and rotate the car unfortunately rotated in the opposite direction. So the young Rafos then up into third, and maybe fitting the 13-year-old running that number 13 as well. Robertson, though, 2.2 seconds clears down into the final couple of corners. Once more, the top four not coming down onto the Joker. As of right now, it's only the number 71 card that has done so, Johnny. Yeah, might as well get some clear air for yourself. Uh, for Robertson, I, again, I don't think we'll see Oh, we'll see this like it was for uh, for Oli Kainen in that first heat. I think he'll go for it on the penultimate lap just to get them lap time. But for Leskinen, this will be a brilliant transfer position. He made the feature last week, don't forget. Top five finish in the feature. Good job, Jano Leskinen. For Rafos, though, this is still important. It's grid position, remember, Arjuna. Even though you don't make it to the feature, don't just give up. Get yourself good grid position for that consolation race. 
And that's the mentality you need as a world champion winner. I mean, you think about the way the point structure is, Johnny, in that world championship, it rewards consistency, making sure that you week in and week out are getting into the feature. And even if you aren't getting podiums every time, top fives, like we saw last time for someone like John Robertson, will always get you to the front of the field. Look at those lockups, by the way, as we watch the action. This is down into turn two. So Toyman looking for another overtake and his teammate right behind, ready to pick apart the pieces. So Leskinen makes his way through and then Rafos, he's been with the team for a fortnight. Not a good introduction to set promotion for him. I still don't know from that angle. I'm trying to give him the benefit of the doubt, Johnny, but it was a big check up there. And if it was contact between the teammates, I'm sure there'll be an interesting debrief as we come across the line to begin the final lap of this race. Doesn't look like the top four have heeded your words and come down onto the Joker, but nevertheless, it's Robertson with a 4.7 second advantage, Johnny. It's just getting close for the second and final transfer position. Oh, and he whacks the wall there, just Jacob Rafos into the tire wall. Leskinen has taken the Joker. So Leskinen essentially is in second on the racetrack. He's made a mistake. Jano Leskinen's made a mistake. He's not even in shot anymore. I don't know where he is but he's out he's gonna miss out on that transfer position it's between Rafos and Kraus that you just saw in shot Leskinen I don't know how in the world he's on his roof right there but Rafos versus Kraus here to the Joker Kraus looks for the overtake Rafos is locked up into the Joker doesn't have the exit oh my goodness what a finish Rafos gains that final transfer position don't forget John Robertson's won this race up the road a few seconds ago 5.6 was the gap. Robertson looking very strong for the Apex Racing team. The young Rafos will advance. The rest of the cars making their way into the last chance qualifiers. Take a look now at our starting grid for the third of these heat races, and it's where we find our world championship winner. Johan Hart in the number 90 machine. He's just wrapped up another successful year in the Porsche Tag or Esports Super Cup. Alongside him, fellow Frenchman Kylian Delomo with Tommy Holman and Josh Fox, row number two. Matt Adams on the inside of row three, where you find Bobby Zelensky for VRS Coanda Racing. And row, uh, row four on the grid, Garrett Lowe, all by himself once more, a seven car grid for this heat race. They really are flying on by, Johnny. That one was very much a bit more bumper cars than we've seen before. Six world championship podium finishes in this heat, four race winners. And believe it or not, Bobby Zelensky hasn't won a race in Rallycross despite his numerous amounts of podiums. He'll start from the back. So Hart from the inside and Del Olmo. It's a two by two by two by two grid. Matt Adams has some experience in the World Championship too. Don't count the Canadian out either. Garrett Lowe in the Fiesta at the back. He's made that Fiesta famous over the years. He's got the inside. It's Hearth versus Delormo to turn number one here into the breaking zone. Delormo trying to make the outside work. There is no room for him. The two Frenchmen battle. The two Frenchmen won't be too polite right here, but Hearth around the outside. Will we see three wide yet again at the start? It's potentially close. And it's still Hearth in the lead by just a touch. Across the line then to start lap number one. Hearth leads from Delomo Holman with Fox all the way down the road. Garrett Lowe has made his way up into the fourth position, but some separation now forming between the front cars. 1.1 between the two Frenchmen, Johnny, as we work our way into the infield. So Hearth, what is that? A couple of seconds ahead of Del Olmo. And Holman's right there looming too. We know Tommy Holman's a multiple-time winner in Rallycross. Grabbed two wins to his name. That last heat, by the way, was some of the best racing I've seen in Rallycross. Certainly on the iRacing service. It was brilliant. Three wide at the start. Cracking finish. And it continues again here. This layout is producing some good action for us. So Joker's here this first time by. You'll see it light up on screen. Now, did Garrett Lowe potentially take to the Joker that time around? No, I, Matt Adams and Fox. I think Garrett Lowe has had a technical issue. He's parked uh, back on the starting grid. Not sure exactly what's happened to the 06 Fiesta, but that means one car guaranteed to make his way into the consolation race. Is still close out front, though, with Johan Hart having to look in his rearview mirrors where Delomo and Holman are keeping him honest, Johnny. As we work down into the Joker, it's going to be important uh, which car decides to go this time around? 
And then we just missed it on, on shot. It was just in the corner of your screen. Fox and Adams in a nice little scrap there. They're just in the back of shot. Hearth with a little love tap from Killian Dalomo. Dalomo looks quick at this point of the season. Certainly quicker than Tommy Horman. He's been putting in some work, Killian Dalomo. Races on multiple different simulators. Very quick on iRacing. His brothers, Quinton and Lucas, very quick as well. Quinton will be in our next heat coming up later. And this is another good overtaking opportunity into here. That hairpin, you can take multiple lines, Arjuna. You can hug the inside, go for a late apex. Killian Dalomo is trying everything here on his world championship compatriot. Oh, he's trying to force him out of the way as well. And if you're Holman watching this from behind, why not come down onto the Joker this time around? Hart decides I'm going and followed by Dalomo. That's not what I think the number 18 car will want. It cycles Holman into the race lead. Zelensky makes contact with Dalomo. He's hard oh. into the wall and day done for oh. such a strong competitor. That is cruel heartbreak. And unfortunately, Johnny, he finds himself having to regroup and reset. Yeah, he'll have another shot in the LCQs, but goodness gracious, that's a whack with the wall right there. That's incredible. That's uh, Thankfully, that's the sim. Oh, and I see Zelensky in the background as well, spun around at the hairpin. So this is what happened to Delomo. He's trying to shove half through the Joker and contact with Zelensky. Whack with the wall. The engine's gone. He's out of the race along with Garrett Lowe. So now we're going to have to establish who's in the first position. So Horman will is still in first yet to take the joker so it's half from fox i think horman will advance he's got the delta on josh fox doesn't he he does and i mean even if hearth is able to slide on through as holman takes to the joker it should be comfortable then for holman to advance to our feature as well there they go through the left hand hairpin the number 87 car will be setting up to take to the joker big contact there unfortunately for delomo was looking very strong Pace on point with the world champion as well, Johan Haas. So that's a good sign heading into our world championship campaign. Haas slightly wide over the jump, compromises the entry into the final corner. Who gets it at the line? It's Haas. That takes a very aggressive line to cut off Holman. He'll advance in first, the 87 car in second. Josh Fox in third, Zelensky across the line in fourth with Matt Adams, our final finisher, Killian Delomo and Garrett Lowe retiring from that race. Getting word that Garrett Lowe had a small technical failure early in that race, so that explains his issue. Let's go ahead then and take a look at our starting grid for heat number four. We are flying through these heats, and once more, it's an Apex Racing team driver on the pole position. Kevin Ellis, as he ventures into the Rally Cross world alongside Altus Esports driver Luis Nunez. Jake Robertson on the inside of Garrett Mains with Josh Edmondson and Quinton Delomo rounding out row three. Jarrett Liebert in seventh position all by himself as our 28 cars, Johnny, split up into four equal heats. Well, hopefully Quinton does a little bit better than his brother, not in terms of pace. His brother was certainly up there, but in terms of a bit of luck after the incident with Bobby Zelensky. That's the Joker merge for you here. It's what it's always been like out in motorsport and in sim racing too. It works exactly the same. This is our first glimpse of what rallycross action will be in the sim. Looks pretty similar to the real world. I do like the start as well. It takes you in this left-hand sweeper that we've already seen. It does mean that if you're on the outside, you might not be in the worst position to get the jump and get the move down into that first corner. We are about to go green for our final heat race of the night here from Barcelona. 28 cars all done, and we'll work our way into those last chance qualifiers on the front row. Good start from Kevin Ellis and Luis Nunez. Ellis tries to cover off the move as his teammate from behind gets tipped around. Jake Robertson, who loses out to Garrett Mains up into the podium position. A side-by-side, -side, Robertson has to defend from Jarrett Liebert. More contact between Robertson and Liebert, and they're four wide with contact in through this quarter. Yeah, utter carnage here. That's the worst start of the four heats, as there's some cars in the wall there. But back to the front, Kevin Ellis Jr., who is looking for a second-row start in your feature race, just ahead of Nunez. These two squabbled last week, and it continues again here today, heading into turn two. Difficult braking zone. It's a long radius one into the middle sector. They're running away with it. Make sure they don't battle too much. Otherwise, the rest of the field will be back in contention for those transfer positions. Little bump there from Nunez, just reminding Kevin that he's still there. I think, unfortunately, for the Delomo clan, I don't think Quentin had the easiest of starts. He finds himself 
eight seconds adrift as we come across the jump to complete lap number one. Don't know who's going to commit to the Joker, but Nunez is looking racy. He switched over from the VW Beetle into the Subaru STI. And underneath the start gantry, they go all over the rear end of Kevin Ellis to start lap number two. Not close enough to get the move done, Johnny, but it is very impressive to see a newcomer to the IRX schedule, uh, both out front, doing well. Yep, good stuff. See if they qualify for the World Championship. Certainly no... At least I've heard rumors, not from Kevin, but from someone else. Maybe he might run for it. Not sure. Luis Nunez definitely know he'll be running for it. And they've both certainly got the talent. It'd be good to have them on the grid if they can make it through pro qualifiers. If they make it through, because pro qualifiers is a very tough task. It's a long few weeks doing those events. Josh Edmondson behind. Hasn't raced in the World Championship before. Also in with a shot. Jarrett Liebert, though... Uh, so where's Jake Robertson fell? He's fell down to fifth. He's taken the Joker. That's why. That's lit up on screen. So he's the lead driver to take the Joker. 3.6 seconds. You do the math. Jake Robertson is not in contention for a transfer position, but if he can get himself up in the third position, he will have that grid spot for the LCQs. It'll be two laps to go at the line. It's still only a couple of tenths between the front two, but they built up a 1.8 second advantage to the 58 car. So does open up the possibility for one of them to blink first on lap four. Under the bridge, they go to start the penultimate lap as we watch Robertson coming through the final corners as well. You can see the visual separation that's formed behind Nunez, though, and that's the important factor, Johnny. Uh, both of these cars, if they keep things clean, will advance to our feature. The rest of the cars in towards our last chance qualifiers. Does look as though we will have not one, but two of them, where one driver in each of them will advance to the feature. Yeah, certainly. Now we're watching here on the screen. Is that Garrett Maines? It is. Weird to see Garrett Maines in the Subaru. Often see him in the VW Beetle that he drove last year. That Smithfield VW. Through the final couple of corners. I think Luis Nunez there, I'm just watching for the lead battle, is taken to the Joker. So Luis Nunez heads to the Joker this time around. Here he is up on screen. That is very close to Josh Edmondson on the merge. And he's off into the gravel too. Now, I'm not sure. I've never done that before. I'm not sure if you will receive what's called a slow down penalty. For, so for those new to iRacing, the service tells you to slow down a certain amount. I don't think he's received that. Otherwise, he would have served it by now. So Luis Nunez looks safe to advance along with Kevin Ellis Jr. Very much still driving the wheels off that car. So I don't think that was a slow down, but at the very least, an off-track penalty, a 1x incident count to Nunez through the final corner and into the Joker then comes Kevin Ellis Jr. We saw him we finding... Him. Sorry, excuse me, look at this! Collision at the line, excuse me, sorry to interrupt there, but Nunez had Kevin Ellis Jr. at the line. I was looking out for that gap there because Nunez took the Joker on the second to last lap, gained an extra second on Kevin Ellis Jr. That's the difference we see at the line. Nunez with questionable tactics, uh, like we saw last week. I won't mention names, but we saw something similar last week ever. But Luis Nunez there blocking Kevin Ellis Jr. at the line, and that will gift him the win from that heat. It does indeed. It was aggressive driving. It means uh, at least Ellis will start one place back. We're into our last chance qualifiers. Luke Fournier will take us to the green with Josh Fox on his outside. Bo Albert and Bobby Zelensky, opposite corners of the globe there. They'll be on row number two with Luis Lejeune and Matt Adams on row number three. Adam Alderton and Killian Delomo will be on row number four in this grid with Quinton Violate and Garrett Lowe rounding out the first of our 10 car last chance qualifiers one spot on the line johnny based on what we saw just then it's going to be physical coming to the line yeah certainly we've seen these in the past these lcqs are uh, always physical as we always say people throw fists and try and gain that one transfer position here will it go to look fornia will it go to a driver with world championship experience we've got half the field with that half the field waiting for the transfer position. Let's see how we go. One spot on the line. Nine drivers will go home here. Engines rev, the car squat down. We get underway for last chance qualifier number one. Bo Albert gets swarmed as two cars down is inside. Zelensky sweeps around the outside trying to take advantage of a mistake from Josh Fox. Utter carnage as I think in second position. Adam Alderson is up five positions on the day already as more carnage coming through the 
tricky right hand complex. I think that was Killian Del Olmo, Jonathan, who falls all the way to the tail end of this field. And at the start, Bo Albert's clutch was slipping at the line, so either it was overheating or something was going wrong for him. I don't think he'll get pinged for a false start. It was by just the slightest amount. If anything, he had a poor start from that, just he wasn't able to get off the line well. But for Alderton, he's doing something right here at the beginning of this race. So if you're a world championship driver looking to race later on, have a watch of Alderton's start. See where he's positioned the car and where he's gained. Was it luck or something else? He's clipped the tire barrier there. It's not going to matter anyway because right now Luke Fournier is running away with that transfer position. Josh Fox had an interesting moment through turn one, ran wide and kind of instigated the chaos, finds himself in fourth. We'll now wait and see if anyone comes down onto the Joker. On board with Bo Albert, the Australian, represented Andretti Autosport in the World Championship last year, and he's committed, Jonathan, to sending it full send. Let's see how he goes. Racing in the morning here. It's currently 8.30 a.m. where he is located in the world, so he's got... He's been awake probably at least for the past two hours, I would say. And it's a bit harder for Bo Albert. I know he's a night owl. And there he is with issues on the exit. Josh Fox right behind him, a world championship winner. Bo Albert, oh, he's into the wall. I think he's got damage. Something's gone wrong for him. He might, I reckon that's done and dusted for the day for Bo Albert, the Altus Esports driver out of the event. How about the Williams Esports driver of Fox? That was thrilling over the jump. Well, I guess that Bo might be able to go get some breakfast and try and get some sleep under his belt. But with the time attack opening for the next round of this IRX All-Star Invitational today, so you can try and qualify your way into this event at the oh. Atlanta Motor Speedway, take a look at the replay for Bo Albert down into the hairpin. And Fox will try and sling the move to the inside. And I wonder, Johnny, if that left rear toe link has just gone bang. Yeah, definitely something up with that. Obviously damage enabled for this one. We saw someone spearing off in the heats to the right-hand side and miss a left-hander, I think due to steering damage. So it can certainly happen. Alderton's driven very well. Be splendid if he qualifies for the World Championship. There's Fox to the Joker. So first of the leaders to blink. Good strategy. You want to do it, as I say, on the penultimate lap. You don't want to do it on that final lap. So Fox right now will potentially gain a position or two, but I don't think it's going to be enough to take up Luke Fournier here in this race. If I was Adam Alderton, I would have tried and, and gone for it at least. Take a risk. Go for it on that penultimate lap. But I guess also he's hoping for a mistake from the Frenchman. Might see him come down this time around, though, as Fournier will come through this gravel slip section, as I like to deem it. It's very tricky to get the car turned in early. Wait for the power to be able to apply and get the momentum across the jump. Fournier doesn't come down. Alderton doesn't as well. So doesn't look like there will be a challenge at the line, at least from the 27. We'll wait and see if Quinton Violati, Zelensky or Lejeune do. Zelensky commits, but he's all the way back in sixth position. be interesting to watch him on the merge and see, after what we saw slightly earlier between him and the Delomo family, Jonathan, if that's going to be something we have to worry about coming back for the World Championship competition. Yeah, they're all very quick. They've all won in different simulators on Rallycross, and they're all very close with each other. Hopefully we don't see a huge incident like we saw in the last LCQ. Uh, we've seen serious incidents. We saw two drivers who raced in the All-Star Invitational, Bakarud and Kevin Hansen. They had a huge incident at the Joker merge in Abu Dhabi a couple of years back. Luke Fournier, though, will advance, and he takes that rear end of the grid in our final feature race. I think he'll actually start second to last because... Oh, no, you're right. He'll start last, and the person who wins our next to the last chance qualifiers will start in the penultimate starting position. So 10 cars working their way through this last chance qualifier. Only Luke Fournier will remain on the night. Adam Alderton on back. Josh Fox, Quinton Violati, Zelensky, Lejeune, Delomo, Lowe, Adams, and Albert retired for the night. Let's go ahead, then, if we can, and take a look at our starting grid for the second of the last chance qualifiers. There are some names in here that might not have expected to be back here, but it will work their way through what will be an interesting portion of the event. It will be Luke Kraus to bring us to the green flag alongside Jake Robertson in the 21. Atu Hakaleto in the 71 inside of Josh Edmondson with Lucas Cram alongside Jarrett Liebert on row three of this grid. Rasmus Toiminen alongside Garrett Maines. Lots of work for those two drivers to do, as well as new Williams Esports recruit uh, Larno, Jarno Leskinen and Quinton Dalomo.
10 more cars ready to get going. And in just five laps time, Johnny, nine more of them will join the nine that have already left the virtual track. Yep, certainly one will advance. We'll join the rear end of the order with Luke Fournier. Waiting for all the cars to appear at the starting line. Engines will begin to rev as at the front, Apex Racing Team's Jake Robertson looks to join his teammates already in that 10 lap feature. It might be four Apex Racing cars in a 10 car grid. He'll have some work to do as he squats down the engines rev. We get underway for the penultimate time tonight. A car does not launch further back in your pack, but it is Robertson who makes contact with the leader, Luke Krause. Three wide, two deep. There's more and more physicality going on here. And at the front, Rasmus Toiminen, six positions gained in just a couple of corners with Luke Krauss defending from Jarno Leskinen over the jump. Well, maybe that real world experience matters. He somehow found his way to the top, this time the right way up. He's not upside down like he was in Super 1600. That was Jarrett Liebert at the start who went nowhere off the line. He's retired the car. He's out of this event. Quinton Delomo just avoided him at the last second, but that's cost Delomo a chance at making up some positions here at the beginning. At least it was a normal start for once. We didn't have too much carnage, but there is Rasmus Toiminen leading this event ahead of Luke Krauss. Oh, and there's a bit more carnage at the hairpin there. I believe it's the two of Garrett Mains pointed in the wrong direction. He backs up into the track, and I believe that was Atu Hakaleto who got collected there. Uh, over the jump, though, at the front, Toyman in nine-tenths of a second clear from Luke Krauss in the fiercely forward colors, and down into the final couple of corners. No one down on the Joker this time around. And between the top four cars, 2.3 seconds of separation, Johnny, as we work on lap number two. I am going to wonder if someone like Jake Robertson will try and come down onto the Joker, get some clean air as we take a look at the replay. Let's try and pick apart what's happened here, what's unfolded. Let's open up the package. Garrett Maines turned around, more contact, and it's just gone topsy-turvy there. And listen, with all due respect, if you're reversing onto the racing line at this level, I don't think you should be racing at this level. It's probably not for you. And Krauss is around. That's the fiercely oh, no. forward machine at the hairpin as well. We will have to go straight to the RaceBot TV replay, but Erasmus Toyman and now with a 2.5 second advantage over the Williams Esports machine. That hairpin proving to be the source of all sorts of drama and controversy. Let's take a look at what happened. Over the anti-cut curbs comes the 34 car with Leskinen right behind him. Does Leskinen try something? He's already offline. I was going to say, he's already offline through the whole section. So he's just out of rhythm. And we've seen a lot of drivers hit that tire barrier. If you get as close as you can to that tire barrier, you pick up the tarmac earlier, which means more grip, which means quicker lap time. And that's what everybody's aiming for. And he's made a mistake of that. We saw that during the Daytona events too with our motorsport drivers, the pro sim racers, as they call them, uh, or the, the pro drivers, I should say, not pro sim racers. These are the pro sim racers here. But at the end of the day, all that matters is that Rasmus Toyman has a 1.8 second lead. He's a podium finisher in Rallycross. Did that back at Iowa. He's done a really good job of it. And he's got some pace. Let's not forget Rasmus Toyman. Despite not winning an event, despite not qualifying for the World Championship in 2021, he'll have to go through the Pro Series. He's in with a good shot this year. His pace looks strong. Last time around, it was slightly so slower for Toyman. So the gap did come down slightly, but can see Robertson very much applying pressure onto the 52 machine. All sorts of sideways over the jump for Toymanen, but keeps it under control as we start the white flag lap. Leskinen down for the Joker. Robertson stays out there, so they'll swap around, hold each other up just a little bit more. Give Toymanen now less worry, I think, to think about at this point, Johnny. And as we think about now the 10 lap feature, I'm a bit concerned about what we've seen on the starts here in these last chance qualifiers once we throw 10 cars on the starting formation. Well, you hope so, that it's 10 of the best in the feature and that you don't have that kind of start. And fun fact for you, Erasmus Toyman, and the first ever feature he competed in was a podium too, that one at Iowa where he finished third. So he's in with a shot here. Certainly does well when he enters feature races. Enters the Joker this final time by. Jake Robertson will join him. He's yet to take the Joker. Leskinen with the only chance at victory. He's just a little bit too far behind. Toyman and then rather easy cruise to the end on that final lap will line up in the penultimate starting position the rest of the drivers done for the night they will now look forward 
to the next week of qualifying in the time attack for the Atlanta Motor Speedway. So Leskinen, Robertson, Delomo, Cram, Edmondson, Acoletto and company go on back. Take a look at these final race results. Mains and Liebert, more technical issues in each of their camps. Only eight cars getting to the finish line here. So five minute practice session. The track will get reset once more here before the cars get back out there for our 10 lap feature to round out round two. The iRacing IRX All-Star Invitational presented by Yokohama. Don't go anywhere. Feature racing action coming up right after this. Today's new cars have upwards of 100 computers in them and a dashboard rivaled only by a commercial airliner. But wouldn't it be nice to really know what all that does for you? At Roadshow, we demystify the world of modern transportation with reviews of your next car, the latest news on what's changing the industry, and videos covering every screen and every new feature you'll encounter in the driver's seat. Get informed, get smart, and get going with Roadshow. Ten more laps here in round two of the iRacing IRX All-Star Invitational presented by Yokohama as Sim Racing's finest get their first competitive crack at the circuit Barcelona to Catalonia. My name is Arjuna Kankapati, alongside is Jonathan Simone with Tyler Maxson in the production booth controlling all of the action. And there's one thing that separates first place from the rest of the pack, the finish line. High performance, race inspired, Yokohama Advan tires give you the drive to win. Discover Advan at YokohamaTire.com. Johnny, 28 cars whittled down to 10, and now we get set to see, I think, a lot more bumper cars than what we saw in the heat races. Those last chance qualifiers got physical, and now I think Sim Racing's finest will do the same for 10 more laps. Yeah, definitely finest. Good way to put it. Oli Kainen starts from first alongside John Robertson. Race winners in Rallycross. Johan Haas, a world champion in Rallycross. And Luis Nunez, a potential race winner, podium finisher, but he's yet to qualify for a world championship. Hopefully we see him in 2021. Sindre Silva has been ever improved. He's also in the feature races. And we have a 13-year-old in Jacob Rafos. It's a little unfair, I think, thinking about 13 years old. Johnny, I know you're not 13, neither am I. It's been a long time since that, almost 13 years in my case. What were you doing when you were 13? Because I remember I was playing uh, some of the old F1 video games on my PlayStation, not competing at the top level of sim racing. No, I'm trying to remember how, what year when I was uh, with 13. Okay, so yeah, I began sim racing around then. <laughs> um, so I think uh, so that would have been 2009, I was 13. Everybody knows my bank account details and stuff like that probably now. Yeah, I've revealed <laughs> so much personal information. But um, yeah, I began sim racing, I think, in 2008, but went online around 2010. So uh, by 2014, I was in my first world championship, uh, not in Rallycross. I don't know anything about Rallycross. I'm not an expert with Rallycross, but um, certainly in open wheelers and other stuff. Uh, but I think it's a good age to start. Bono Haas, who was a five-time world champion on another simulator, certainly did it at a young age, at 14 years of age. So certainly possible for Jacob Rafos. He does this a lot. And along with Jano Leskinen, they look very quick and they're very impressive. If we uh, Let's remember back to Sebastian Job when he was 14 years of age. He was tipped for to be a star of the future. He certainly was winner of the Porsche Super Cup recently in the past couple of years. That's exactly what I was going to point out, Johnny. Joe went from, you know, 13 and 14 years of age, being part of RaceBot TV and, and Monday Night Skippies, which is like our uh, community league that RaceBot does uh, on Monday nights. He started there and is now a world championship competitor. That is incredible to think about. Last year, he went to the top as well. 
Yeah, certainly good on him. And, you know, I think there is an element of natural talent that goes into racing. But if you don't have that, you just have to put in more hours to beat those guys. And it certainly comes from someone who um, who's had to deal with that, you know, because, again, I'm definitely, no, I'm not naturally talented. I can't do three laps and be on pace. I need a thousand laps. But if you give me a thousand laps, I can certainly be quick. And it's that sort of Lewis Hamilton, Nico Rosberg sort of battle that they had where Hamilton can get on the pace within three laps, but it took Rosberg a thousand. But he still beat him one year, no matter what bad luck turned Lewis Hamilton's way. But anyway, on towards Rallycross time, different sport in a sense. Ironically, the same sport. Here's the group for your feature race. Oli Kine and Pole, Robertson second. The two Apex teammates second and third. Good to see an Altus car, although not Bo Albert in fourth. That's Lewis Nunez. Sindre Silva, though, our junior, very impressive. Top five start for him in the feature. Very impressive. You have the young 13-year-old alongside Jacob Rafos. Are you talking about just how impressive he's been? Holman alongside Kevin Ellis Jr. with Luke Fournier and Rasmus Toiminen rounding out our 10-car feature. It was heart-taking victory a couple of weeks ago at the Brands Hatch circuit. Now we get our first competitive look at what the Barcelona's Catalonia track will present on the iRacing service. We expect this track to be on the schedule for the 2021 iRacing, I, I, no, iRacing IRX Rallycross World Championship, but now it's all about this final start in round two of the IRX All-Star Invitational. Front row to Olakainen and Robertson with Hearth and Nunez tucked in behind as we wait for the lights to illuminate, the engines to begin, begin revving, and the cars to get underway for 10 laps here. Great, great launch, excuse me, from the front row. The two Apex Racing teammates make contact with one another, and all the kind and scampers off into the race lead. Those Apex Racing teammates, Johnny, are done for the day. Uh, Hearth is one of them involved. Hearth is into the gravel. We've got a set car on its roof. That's the 13 of Jacob Rafos. He's turned back the right way around. And I couldn't pick apart who the other Apex car was because John Robertson's clean. Kevin Ellis Jr. looks good as well. So am I seeing things here or am I missing somebody? So I, 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 we've still got to pick apart what happened. But so far in the lead, though, all that matters is that Oli Kynan is in the first position and Robertson has fell down the field. It looks like Oli Kynan has got his... Uh, this will be an easy race for him if he keeps it together. It was Johan Hart, and I do think it was Robertson and Hart coming together as more contact at the hairpin as well. Luis Nunez, I believe Kevin Ellis Jr. getting together... All sorts of chaos on lap number one then, and big gaps forming between the front couple of cars. Kevin Ellis Jr. up six positions into second, with Rasmus Toyman and up seven into third. Got two set esports teammates in the podium positions, Johnny. A bit of an unexpected turn, if you ask me. Yeah, so here's the replay of the start. So there's a lot to pick out here. Kevin Ellis Jr. came steaming in. So there are the three Apex cars. So I swear I saw two off. So what's happened to the other one? Ah, there we go. So he's rejoined there, John Robertson. So I thought I saw two Apex cars off into the wall. I looked to a separate camera to pick apart what's happening, and that's where John Robertson's rejoined. So it was only one at the end of the day of Hearth that is out of this race. But at the end of the day, that timing tower on the left-hand side, that's accurate. Oli Kynan first. Kevin Ellis Jr. after starting eighth is in second. Toyman, and after starting last, is in third. What did I say about him scoring podiums in features? He's in with a shot here again today. And we're only working lap three, so there's still a long way to go. No one come down, has come down onto the Joker just yet. Not sure if we should expect maybe Robertson as we're watching now, or this is Jacob Rafos, no, T Tommy Holman, excuse me, in the set eSports number 87. Some big damage to the right front. And he was the first car coming down onto the Joker, so... He might be someone looking for a top five finish, but no chance really of a podium just yet, Johnny, because Olakainen well and truly in control. And Ellis is going to have to do something special to close the gap. Tommy Horman recently competing in some Rally X Nordic, currently leads the championship after the weekend. That's in the real world. Good on him for getting a real world drive. It's really all about money now for Tommy Horman because talent's there, and I think he's proved it and will continue to prove it. So somebody sponsor him. If you're watching out here today, he is a mammoth driver. He was, in my opinion, one of five different drivers who almost deserved to win the World Championship last year. Not going to name all five, but certainly came down to a little bit of luck at the end of the day. And Johan Haas topped that out. But anyway, whatever, we're on towards focusing on this race win. Oli Kainen, remember, he hasn't raced since that first heat. 
And I think there's a car ahead here that's going to retire. We see a car. Is that Luke Fournier pulling off to the side of the racetrack? He's going to retire in that Subaru. Somehow managed to blow his engine. Maybe residual damage from all the chaos at the start. The 20, 236 then to the side of the track. In fact, he's going to try and nurse it back down onto pit road. Gap out front is 3.2 seconds. Uh, Kevin Ellis Jr. very much enjoying his transition to the dirt side of things, slipping and sliding around. Not something you necessarily want to do in the Porsche 911 Cup car, Johnny, but nevertheless, with that World Championship coming to a close, it does look as though, with Kevin qualifying for not one but two of these All-Star Invitationals so far, he may be making a crack at this World Championship as well. Yeah, either that or he's just in here for some fun. A lot of talent out there that don't currently race in Rallycross, and I feel like this year we're going to have the most talented grid Certainly, be something exciting to see as Luis Nunez here in a nice scrap with Sindre Silva. The two side by side ending into the tiptoe middle sector. Silva will block the apex of the corner. That hampers Nunez's exit. He's got to cover the inside though because Nunez will have a peak and he does. Nunez with a drag race onto the next dirt section. We'll have to form up behind Sindre Silva. Oh, behind Luis. Uh, yeah, Sindre Silva, excuse me. There's a bit of a shove there from Silva coming through the corner that got Nunez all sorts of sideways. He hung on to it, gathered it up in time, but unable to make anything work. So down through the final corner, a couple of car lengths separating them. This is the battle for fifth and sixth. Both of these cars also having come down onto the Joker. Gap out front continues to get extended, but they're not really too close. Three seconds between first and second with a further 1.3 back to Toyman and in the final podium position. John Robertson riding around all by himself as Nunez gets it wrong and just about gets collected by Tommy Holman. And Holman will slide his way up into six. It was looking like a good run for Nunez, Johnny, and it comes to an end for now. Ah, but these two are watching on screen. It's Toyman who seems to be catching Kevin Ellis Jr. in the gaps. So seven tenths the gap now between the two. Ellis Jr. was quicker some laps, but this past lap, Toyman has really reeled him in. And is he in with a shot of an overtake with just a few laps remaining? Not the best of runs through turns three and four there. Here's a replay of what happened between Nunez and Silva. This was a cracking battle as they go through. Oh, there we go. So that's the incident we saw earlier, the spin. And then I think he's been collected by Tommy Horman as well to make matters a little bit worse. So yet to see the Joker from your top four. Will any of them go for it now? Toyman's got to do something different. Has he left it too late? And you know what right now? Ellis Jr. is in no man's land. I think he has to take the Joker next time by, even if he doesn't want to. And I don't think it will hurt him too much, but if he doesn't take the Joker next lap, Toyman will seal second position because by Ellis Jr. taking it on the final lap, we saw what happened in our heats. It'll interrupt this battle for the podium. I think if you're Ellis, you actually have to wait for the final lap, Johnny, because we have seen you gain time and that's what Toyminen should do. Come down onto the Joker, get the extra second from the momentum off the Joker. But for Ellis Jr. to cover off the run from anyone coming onto the Joker, it's always easier that we've seen to take the shorter line. Interestingly, though, yeah. I'm so wrong as Kevin Ellis Jr. down onto the Joker. It's Toyminen who stays out, and Toyminen will get his elbows out, Johnny, coming to the line. Well, he's going to... Uh, you know what? There's... N <laughs> Rasmus Toyman talented, but he's not gaining a second on the racetrack on Kevin Ellis Jr. Unless Ellis Jr. makes a mistake. He's got that covered. Race win will go to the Finn. Yanni Oli Kainen. Oh, goodness gracious. Good to see him back in victory lane. Has not won a race in quite some time. The last time Yanni Oli Kainen won an event was the final round at Sonoma. He's got two world championship wins coming through for a third unofficially. He will take to the Joker and lights to flag. Fairly easy for the 44 machine. Takes victory in round two of our iRacing IRX All-Star Invitational. Presented by Yokohama. And in that fight to second place, it's Kevin Ellis. Uh, very impressively showing up in the dirt side of things. Toyman and settles for third. The Apex Racing Team looking very strong. Only getting two cars into the top five in today's action. Holman. Drops behind Sindre Silva in the closing stages to settle for six with Luis Nunez in seventh. Interesting race there, Johnny. And one that I think is going to have a lot of these drivers thinking about what they'll do differently when they return for the World Championship season. Well, as predicted, just the way the start-finish line is positioned, 
Drivers will not take that joker on the final lap that often, I don't think, in the real races as we look at the results. So, Yoni Elikainen, third win in a World Championship event, one of those unofficial, and that's the one he took today. Kevin Ellis Jr. with a podium. Good on him. Well done. Came at the cost of his teammate, Johan Haath, who was a DNF. Rasmus Toiminen, a second podium as well. We know he's got the pace. It's just incidents he's got to avoid. Uh, but John Robertson, at the end of the day, despite all those incidents, still cleaned up fourth. Sindre Silva started fifth, ends up in fifth at the end of the day. But uh, I have to say, the, uh, it's good experience for the young guns, such as Jacob Rafos, who ends up in the eighth position, right behind Luis Nunez and Tommy Horman. And good on Luke Fournier, despite having a damaged car, getting out of everyone's way, and at least finishing this race and not just pressing the escape button like you can do virtually and giving up. And that's what I was referring to earlier, Johnny, when it comes to the point situation for a world championship. Consistency merits results. And even if you get engine damage like Fournier did, the difference between ninth and 10th is a couple of points. And so you need to make sure you get every single point that you can get. Because like we saw last season, when it came to three points after nine incredible rounds, John Robertson not getting into the feature race it meant that he couldn't fight for the championship. No, certainly not. Features are very important. Pays the most points. A little less dramatic like it was in 2019 and 2018 in our inaugural seasons when I commentated those. And in those ones, if you missed the feature, you were essentially pretty much uh, in with no shot of, uh, of the title. Any missed feature was a big deal. And I think with the new point system, it's a little bit better. Well, I tell you what, I think we have the podium position standing on by. Let's see if we can dial up Yoni Olakainen. Jonathan, take it away. Yoni, first of all, we got you. Can you hear us? Yes. Ah, perfect. Congratulations, mate. Your third World Championship victory, you could say, in a sense. How does it feel? Pretty good? The thanks. It feels pretty good. This time we could manage to stay away from all the carnage and stuff. So yeah, this time it went quite well. And we're not a fan of taking the Joker on, on the final lap, obviously because of where the start finish line is and, and you lose a second, but you had such a big lead today in your heat and feature. Um, it was pretty simple for you. You could take that joker on the final lap and get away with it, is what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, I probably could have taken it, but we just wanted to play it safe because in final, my gap to Kevin was like a bit under four seconds before the last lap. So if I could have gone to Joker and he would have been on normal track, it, it could have possibly be uh, uh, quite a tight moment, so we just played it safe and went to last lap. And hey, by the way, I know it's only May, so we're still a few months away from the World Championship, but you've scored a hat-trick today. Pole, heat victory, feature victory. We've only seen those a handful of times in Rallycross. This is some good confidence, isn't it, for you, coming towards the World Championship later on? Yeah, it's this is good practice and I just got my new simulator so it has been a good way to get some feeling for the new equipment and yeah, so feels good and I feel quite confident for the autumn. Lovely mate, we'll leave you to it. Well done again today on Victory. It was an awesome job by you. Thank you, mate. So always good to hear Yoni Olikainen there, Arjuna. He is a talent in Rallycross, and it's good to see him back on the top step of the podium. And some emotion coming through there. Not always the case when you talk to Scandinavian drivers, but I think someone who might be a bit happy with how this race has gone. Kevin Ellis Jr. is standing by now. Uh, Kevin, second place today. Very good result. How are you finding this transition over to Rallycross? Yeah, it's a, it's a fair bit more physical than, than what I'm used to, for sure. Uh, obviously, the well, fine went quite well. Uh, we got ourselves up there with some track position, but um, you know, in the first heat there, we got intent right for the win, which wasn't great. So I got my, my first taste of that from uh, from Luis. But um, yeah, you know, the feature feature went pretty well. We got through the first corner relatively clean. Um, yeah, I think uh, Tommy uh, just messaged me there saying he was just trying to clear us, not realizing I was four away with uh, John and Johan. So uh, I tried to back out of that as best I could. Uh, and couldn't quite get out of that. And then, of course, I, I tipped Sindri around, which was all my fault. So uh, apologies to, to Sindri and, and anyone else who was involved in that. But, um, yeah, I mean, all in all, pace was, was good. We managed to keep a respectable pace up there <laughs> compared to Yoni. He was uh, really, really quick. So, 
uh, yeah, grats to him on, on the win. What do you feel like is the difference, Johnny? You just, uh, sorry, excuse me, Kevin. You just wrapped up your Porsche Tag or Esports Super Cup campaign for 2021. Another very impressive showing. This requires a different type of a mindset, I feel. You talk about it being more physical. You have to get elbows out. And you have to be prepared for the moves to come as well. Yeah, really aggressive. You know, obviously, um, I'm used to the close quarter stuff with, with Pesk. Obviously, it's really, really close quarters uh, uh, racing. And, and there were the 40 car grids and, and everything else. So, um yeah, it's, it's just a little bit more difficult in terms of the car contact, you know, um, in Pesky, you, you don't really get contacts too much uh, when you're up near the front bend rally cross, you know, you're going to get a hit from somewhere. Um, it's just a case of trying to minimize how much your car is going to move and, and all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a lot more intense, you know, where uh, <laughs> luckily I've got, you know, the best in the business alongside me to kind of teach me and get me up to speed with uh, Jake, John and Johan. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to learn as much as I can through the All-Star stuff here and uh, just trying to make the most of, of uh, being on the grid every week because obviously we need to qualify our way in. So uh, it's important to not take it for granted and, uh, and just try and enjoy it as best we can. But, uh, yeah, really good transition. I'm uh, yeah, to get P2 today is really good, really enjoying the uh, the new challenge. Well, and qualifying for the next round from the Atlanta Motor Speedway gets underway today as well, so I'm sure you'll be focusing on that one. The one good thing that I think for your first two races here in the IRX All-Star Invitational, uh, Kevin, is that we started at two tracks relatively new to the iRacing schedule, and now we go to Atlanta, which has been a staple on you know the World Championship agenda. You have your teammates that are helping you, have you already started your laps? How are you feeling about that racetrack? So Atlanta's definitely up there in terms of uh, one of my favorite rallycross tracks. Um, you know, the last two weeks we've uh, I've had to kind of jump in. Uh, you know, when the time attack has gone live, that's when I've had to start practicing just with obviously Pesk and all my other commitments at the minute. So it's really been short practice to get up to speed. Um, you know, I've not had a lot of time. So, uh, I mean, it could go, you know, either way, really. I mean, obviously a lot of guys have got a ton of experience at Atlanta and I haven't. Um, but obviously, I've got more experience at Atlanta compared to these tracks, so it really could go either way. Um, but yeah, for sure, I'm going to uh, get my head down and get the get the work in, and hopefully, we can get another result like this. Great to see you enjoying your time trying something else, Kevin, and hopefully, it means a run at the World Championship later this year as well. Congratulations on second. Hopefully, we see you in one week's time as well. Thanks, guys. So, Kevin Ellis Jr. for the Apex Racing Team. They had a lot of strong names up in the mix. He ends up as the strongest of them all. One more interview to get to, and it's Rasmus Toyman, and Jonathan Simone is standing by. So, Rasmus, welcome back to the podium, mate. Last time, I remember, you made your first feature race at Iowa in the World Championship, and you ended up third in the feature. So here you go again, another podium for you. Yeah, another podium, and thank, thank you so much, Jonathan. Uh, oh, my God. I don't know what to say about this because uh, started P10 and had a pretty awkward quality and heat and got my got myself through the uh, C main and B mains and and here I am now just uh, try to take the, everything smoothly in the final and uh, got rewarded awesomely for the third prize. And some people don't know this about you, but you, you are the RX Academy champion a couple of years back. And you did race here in the real world last year in Super 1600. And you were on your roof at one stage. It's good to be on the podium this time out. Yeah, it's, it's good to be a podium. And now I have like both in uh, uh, virtual and reality third places here. So <laughs> <laughs> two podiums in Barcelona, maybe that's a good sign for coming or going to the world championship qualifiers. And what's your 2021 looking like, both sim and, and virtual? Uh, oh, sorry, both real and, and virtual. Are you? Uh, what are you racing in the real world? What are you racing on the sim? Definitely back for rallycross, I hope, in, in iRacing. Yeah, we are planning to, or I, I'm in the army now, so I have to clear that away first. And uh, hopefully I manage to do all the qualifiers. And of course, the goal is to go to the world championships. And I just like picked the pineapple, golden pineapple last year because I was 11th there and got pretty upset about that. But uh, this year is going to be a new year and it's going to be an awesome one for sure. It's Still playing disc golf? Still doing that? Yeah, all, all kind of stuff what I can do <laughs> and keep my mind cool. And now I just, when I have my mind cool, I see that uh, all the positive work is coming to other other sports and everything. So and seeing now myself in the third place and it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's paying off, I'm, I must say. 
Yeah, definitely. Keep it up, man. I've been seeing you on Instagram, still playing disc golf. So it's good to see you uh, taking your mind off things. Well done, Rasmus. Awesome job. Great to see you back on the podium, man. Yeah, thank you very much. And congrats to my teammate, Jon. And wow, what a try from him. And yeah, mm. you have to you have to be, if you want to watch the World Championship, you have to watch what SET Esports can do. Hey, I love that. A bit of a teaser for the World Championship later on, Arjuna. They've got a strong squad coming in for 2021. And some people forget, actually, Rasmus Toiminen did compete for Finland at a national level playing disc golf. Some people never heard of that. Give it a Google. Multi-talented person as well, then, and celebrating a podium. Once more, I heard a bit more emotion than I expected from, from a Scandinavian. I mean, on RaceBot TV, the great thing is we get a global uh, crew of drivers that we get to interview. And for Yoni Olakainen, his teammate Rasmus Toiminen, clearly excited about what today represented for them. They came out gun swinging, Olakainen pole position in our feature, taking victory as well. Time to start looking forward then, Johnny. We will be back in action in just seven days' time, heading though to Sonoma and Atlanta, so we'll stay all in the United States of America. Uh, the real racers cross the coast into wine country as well. And like I said, Atlanta Motor Speedway, one of the staples on the World Championship schedule, one of my favorite tracks as well to watch racing around. Yeah, certainly. Sonoma, I love. It's definitely a driver's favorite. Atlanta, the long layout that we're heading to. Another great circuit there. Long Joker Delta time. It's around about eight to eight and a half seconds, depending on the merge and the exit of the back straight. Good to see them both. Uh, two great layouts. And then we head to NASCAR town for the final round on June the 1st. We'll get a couple of weeks off. The iRacing month of May busy as well, just like the real world in the NTT IndyCar series. Time to wrap up from Barcelona here, though, for round two in the iRacing IRX All-Star Invitational presented by Yokohama. Some incredible action from both sides of the pond as the real world superstars played bumper cars in Daytona while the sim racers got their first crack at one of the newest tracks on the IRX schedule. Plenty more action in the next few days on iRacing Live to come. Tomorrow, the next generation of NASCAR machinery gets its official debut on the iRacing service in the eNASCAR Pro Invitational Series as the drivers there attempt to tame the Darlington Raceway. You can catch all the action live on FS1 at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. For now, though, it's Henrik Krogstad and Yoni Olakainen in victory lane here at the second round of the iRacing IRX All-Star Invitational presented by Yokohama. On behalf of the team at RaceBot TV, my name is Arjuna Kankipati. I've been joined by Jonathan Simon with Tyler Maxson in the production room controlling all of the action, and we'll see you in just seven days' time for more virtual dirt action on the iRacing.com service.